Welcome to Wednesday Comics. Brought to you by RootsOfTheSwampThing.com and Supercon 2018 Return of the Con. Keep turning those pages. Welcome to Wednesday Comics. To my right, we have Alex. Alex, how are you doing? Hello, everyone. No nickname today because I don't feel like it. To my left, we have Garrett. Garrett, how are you doing? I am doing so well. You guys uh, match your clothes before you came here? You guys call each other? Okay, we're wearing black. But <laughs> I, he's wearing like, a jacket and a gray shirt. I'm wearing a black shirt. Are, Garrett, are you wearing blue jeans? I'm wearing gray jeans. Oh, wow. Marvin, did you and I talk to each other so we could be matching blue jeans? I don't like the way you're coming at me like this. <laughs> I think I think you started with a really stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's where my mind went. I was like, I got to say something about these. Ooh, ooh. These what? guys that look like instead nothing of, alike look <laughs> so alike right instead now. Instead of giving them nicknames, let's yeah. draw a stupid <laughs> connection. I know. It's like uh, twins with Schwarzenegger and DeVito. Speaking you don't deserve that other beer I gave you. <laughs> yeah, you better get that back over here. <laughs> that's the Pat's Blue Ribbon talking. Uh, we're going to talk to you about today in Free Talk. A little uh, news went down. might be old by the time you're hearing this. Actually, it's, it's fairly new. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis, we knew he's coming to D.C. We knew that. Mm-hmm. We knew he was doing a story in Action Comics 1000, a backup story. But they announced for sure, 100%, in a Forbes uh, interview, that he's taking over Action Comics with issue 101. Which 1001. W- which was the uh, 1001, sorry. About 1,000 off. Um, nope, 900. Um, <laughs> the That was a rumor for a while, but now it's officially he's taking over that book. Um, I believe... No, I don't know. Who's the artist? Anyway, never mind. Superman. He's taking over Superman, too. That was announced with, in the read number eight to number one. I believe uh, Gleason's staying on for art on that book. Or he's taking over action. Gleason is involved in somehow. I forgot what yeah. it was. But leading up to that, the merge between Action Comics 1000 and these books is going to be a six-part miniseries called Man of Steel. It's going to be Brian Michael Bendis, Jason Fabak, Ivan Rice, uh, the aforementioned Tomasi, and I think somebody else I forgot. I should look that up here when I ask you guys some questions. But let me ask you one thing. You you guys are both slow on Action Superman. Is that yeah, correct? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, I had to thank you, but yes. I haven't been on Superman in a while just because they crossed over so many times. I don't even know where we're at. No, I got the, yeah, the, the last one. I got the last one. So... Let me ask, first, Garrett, the uh, Superman aficionado, the uh, lover of Superman. This man has an S on his chest uh, from the day he's born, uh, actually in the back in his cape. Um, right. Both, right? He has S in front and a man back. Yep, he does. Uh, he should. If he doesn't, then it's not Superman. Are you excited for Brian McCormick to take off over these properties, or were you enjoying the run it was on? No, I'm excited for him to come on. I think it's time for a refresh. Not a restart, but like a reboot, but like a refresh. Um I think it's crazy. I can't believe he's... I know Bendis is able to do a lot of projects, so that he's going to be able to do action and Superman, I kind of also like. That way, those two stories will be running parallel to one another. I'm hoping that doesn't mean there's going to cross over all the time. But if it did, I mean, that'd be basically a weekly Superman book. If it's I would say story. there's a greater chance, right, if he's doing yeah, both of them, that they're going right. to cross over a lot? Um, do not like... I don't know if you mentioned this, that they're reboot, renumbering Superman to issue yeah. one. That I'm not a fan of. Um, I don't like the Marvel trend of, I don't know how this got happened that he's going to do a new number one of Superman. So that I'm not too fond of, but I get it. It's going to be a new start for him, but I, I would like some justification on why they're just going to, besides it just being like, ah, oh, Bendis is coming on. I'm going to like, did Superman's whole family die? And this is why it's a number one. Well, actually I, I didn't notice. So May 30th is when this man of steel debuted. It starts. It's a weekly mini series for six issues. And then it, Jumps into so here's the people going to be involved. We have Doc Chandler, Ivan Rice, Ryan Sook, Kevin McGuire, Evan Hughes, Jason Fabak. Uh, there's going to be a prelude, and there's oh they also announced DC Nation number one, which is going to be an anthology DC book that's going to be twenty five cents. It mm. comes out May second, right before Free Comic Book Day, and it's going to have stories from Tom King, Brian McCobanis, like all these people. Tom, uh, Tom King's doing a Joker story in it, so they announced like. They announced their free comic book day comic book was going to be DC Superheroes Girl, but then they announced also, like, it's not going to be free, but it's going to be 25 cents. I think maybe to justify the cost of all these people doing something for this book. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a prelude for Man of Steel in there, and that's going to be um, Jose Luis uh, Garcia Lopez and Bennis doing one there. But here's what the actual series is going to be about. Um, 
This series will shake up the classic story of Krypton's final days and Kal-El's path to becoming an iconic superhero, introducing a new villain that knows a terrifying secret behind the destruction of Superman's homeworld. So it sounds like you said that maybe there's some justification for it being Superman number one. It sounds like almost that Brian McAvennis is going to go back and kind of brick on his history a little bit. What do you think about that? I didn't know about that until I just read this. Um, I can see it because it's been a while since Jeff John's Secret Origin because that's been his definitive origin up to this point. Um, they haven't redefined the origin in a while, so I'm okay with that. But again, it better not be, I was telling Marvin and Alex, it better not be like one more day with Spider-Man where basically they're changing everything just so like there's no Lois, there's no John, there's it's just Clark on his own starting. I mean... I don't need to see him back as like a late, a young adult going to the Daily Planet for the first time, so on and so forth. Like, I think, I think you can be more creative than that and tell stories where he's at currently, or if you can do something to shake up what's happening in his life right now. But I don't think you need to go back to the past and change that so you can tell more stories. What do you think, Alex? Because you're not really, are you beholden to the uh, origin there's, story? Or are you, there's are you okay a, there's a lot of things that you're saying here that I'm just, I'm not excited about. And I think a lot of it is that why, why go back and take, yeah. And redo his whole history, or at least parts of his history. Let him just, I don't know. It's just, it seems ridiculous. Do you want yeah, to, once you said it, that, it's almost too much. I think it's a good thing to have him do action in Superman. Bravo. That's that's a smart choice. That way, like you said, you're getting, every week you're getting Superman. And if you're going to do a tie over or a crisscross or a, a crossover, watch me say three different sentence to Chris titles. Crossover. <clears throat> if you're going to do that, that's fine. That At least then you know the story's going to be fluid. My problem is the the renumbering. Why renumber it? That makes no sense. And yes, you may quote unquote justify it. I just found here's what he says here. By the way, Superman is going to have Arp, Ivan, Rice, so that's he's going to be taking over the art duties there. So no, uh, that is not uh, Gleason. That's a hit or a miss for me. He's okay. Yeah, it depends. Uh, The conclusion of Man of Steel will leave both fans and Superman reeling, and the debut story arc will delve deeper into its consequences. Uh, building on the popularity already gen- generated by Peter J. Tomasi and Pat Gleason. So it sounds like something's going to happen in that Man of Steel that people are going to either like or not like. You know, it's one of those things that they, the marketing is like, it'll never be the same again. He's going to try to do something that's going to be like... I think uh, Wednesday Comics predicted it first, probably <laughs> killing off John Boy. I No, he meant, he said on Twitter he's not going to do that. Okay. People asked him, and he said, I, I love what if they he did. Kill, oh, what when if they I, kill Lois? No, actually... I don't think you could kill Lois. Well... Here's the, well, okay, in July... Then, well, you know they're going to bring her back. I know, but still. Low, on low. July 25th, Action Comics resumes this issue 1001 with Art by Gleason, so he's taking over Action Comics. These uh, Action Comics will deliver stories that are more character-focused, introducing new villains, or, or excuse me, new heroes and villains, and spotlight Clark Kent and his role at Daily Planet. Action will also take a closer look at how the action of Superman impact the DC Universe. So it sounds like action is going to be like Superman's world, and Superman will be just about Superman itself. I himself. like that. That's so. what those comics were used to be. Detective was about mm-hmm. Batman's world. Uh, same thing parallel to action. Action didn't always have Superman in it. I mean, yeah. it's it's heavily influenced by Superman and Metropolis. There was a good while where action was Firebird and uh, Nightwing. Nightwing. Yeah. And also... Uh, Flamebird, by the way. Flamebird, sorry. What's the... Uh, geez, why am I blinking? His name? What's his friend? It's about Jimmy Olsen. It was Jimmy Olsen's yeah. book for a while, too. mon was in there for a while, too. Yeah, yeah. So, like you said, it was about everybody else but Superman. I mean, that was right so before. So, Action Comics is kind of like what TMNT Universe is. Right. It gives a spotlight yeah. to other characters right. and it sounds in like the that's Superman what world. Right. Bennis is going to try to do. Rightfully so. Hey, t- Unlike Superman, the book that will have Superman in it. Here's the, oh. the thing. Uh, it makes me a little excited, but also it's, it's going to be something that he's going to be tiptoeing. Like, it could go wrong. It could go good. Like, it could be great. Be like, wow, this is the fresh new take we need. Or it could be, why are you messing with something that, like, the changes you're making aren't really that great story wise. So, like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, well, that's, I guess that's my concern. My, blah, blah, blah. That's my concern. To be fair, I'm not. I'm not a big Bendis fan to begin with. I haven't read enough of his previous things to be like, man, this is so good. I've been reading more of his current Defenders and other things that I either have nothing nice to say or I'm kind of feeling burnt from them. Um, I just, I'm not, I don't know if I'm won over yet. I'm excited to see maybe what happens, but this is going to be one of those things. It's already going to be on the chopping block right when it comes out going, uh, I really need it. Yeah, there's things they could do to me as a Superman fan that if it pisses me off enough. Well, there's going to be a lot for you to try before you get there. There's going to be DC Nation. There's going to be Man of Steel. There's going to be his backup in action. So if all those, like there's a, there's a lot of stuff you could be like, no, I'm not going to get this yep. here before we get there that you could be like, I'm out already. Like it doesn't grab me. 
Uh, also announced his, his Jinx World imprint. I'm not sure if you guys know about that, like Powers and uh, Scarlet, the books he was doing when he was at Marvel, but it was his own kind of imprint. He's bringing those over to DC and doing them. Uh, also, DC announced that they're going to give him a, a new imprint where he's going to take all uh, his all-time favorite characters in very unique situations and combine it with new characters created for this imprint. So, you know, kind of like the young animal imprint that they have, the uh, new one with the new age of heroes. Menace is going to get his own where he gets to do whatever he wants. So. This, hmm. I think Maybe they're giving him too much that's, He's too getting much too much power. power. He's yeah. getting way too much power is what it feels like right now. Um, you're going to write 12 I don't think you guys, do you realize like, Bennis for Marv, like right. I know what he's. That's done. what he did over there. No, I understand that. Right. But so if they were going to bring him over, this is what they were going to do. But ten him. years ago, yeah, when he was, I don't know if he's in their prime anymore in writing. And it just, it, it just seems to be that's a lot of power to give someone. I get maybe that's your plan is to reinvigorate DC. You already had the invigoration with Rebirth. Yeah. Now I'm you, already sold. Now you're now you're kind of but burning like, the rope at both ends. But it's like if Jeff Johns went to Marvel and Marvel gave him all this stuff, it makes sense. Like he that's what he does is build worlds. And that's what yeah. Bennis did. I mean he hasn't for a while, and you're correct about that. But the old Bennis, 2000, 2010, that guy built all of Marvel. Like the everything that you know and love, everything that the movies are based on. I mean, so much so that for a while, from Iron Man One until uh what movie was it? But for a long time. He was the consultant on those movies from, for Marvel. He like helped write stuff. You know, the end of Iron Man, that little thing between Nick Fury and Tony Stark. He wrote that whole thing. That's his. So, Bennis, well, like they when they were making the movies, they're like, "Hey, Bennis, help us create this world." So it makes sense that DC, like, "Hey, come over with." And I'm sure, like you said, they, maybe they gave him too much, but I'm sure it wasn't just like, "Hey, you want to come over and write action?" They're like, "We'll give you all this stuff. You can bring over your own thing." I'm sure it was part of the bargain deal yeah. that he's got. You need to give me these type of things for me to want to do this. I'm just saying that as a guy who's seen him only write one Defenders issue in a month and a half, two months. The dude was sick, though. Yeah, he was I, in the hospital. No, I get that. I understand. I do understand these things. I'm just, I'm being skeptical until he proves me that he's going to be a good choice for this. Yeah, I'm like cautiously optimistic. Like I, I'm, I'm excited because I'm ready for a new start, but I'm also worried that he's going to cross way too far over the line. And you guys know I don't care about continuity. Like I'm not super like shackled to that. So if he changes something and it works story wise, I'm okay with it. I won't get really that upset right. about it. But, but if you change the character I know you, to tell a story, that's what I, mean. yeah. I know. Yeah, it, as right. long as the character is the same. But I know yeah. you're more like, hey, that you shouldn't really. That's more sacred. Uh, so I can see you getting upset about like that. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, exactly. that, that thing's going to be in Man of Steel. So if Man of Steel, if you read that and you're like, I'm out. Like, he's, There's no way I will be. I know you won't. <laughs> we just feel com- complain about it for months. But I will. Uh, at least there's good people on there. I like Gleason's art. I mean, yeah. depends. Sometimes. I'm, re- I'm, re- I'm ready to give him a chance. Like, I think he'll do something awesome, but I'm also at the same percentage worried that he's going to screw something up. So the uh, word is also, these now from now on, those are all confirmed. These are all rumors going forward here. They uh, they announced... Um, good question. <laughs> they announced that... Oh, they announced. This is all rumors. So since Peter J. Tomasi is no longer doing a book because he's Superman got taken away, he's still doing Superman and the Sons, I believe, but uh, there's a rumor going around that he's taking over Detective, that they're going to put him on Detective because James Tinney the fourth is helping out Scott Snyder with Justice League. So I wanted to know what you guys thought of that because for a while he did Batman and Robin. Yeah. So it's not like he's not used to that world. But... I know we've been liking James Tinian's detective, so Tomasi takes that over. What do you think, Alex? I don't. I don't know. That's a tough one for me to say because I do. I really do enjoy Tinian's work on Detective Comics. I'm open to. I'm always open to a new writer unless they're a shit writer. So it's it's okay that he's getting it, but I'm also a little. I didn't care for his Batman Robin. The first like maybe twelve issues were good until uh, Damian dies and Bruce goes berserk and has to go. You know, everybody's his best friend. So I'm just, I, I don't know. I'm concerned of where he would end up taking the story. Well, I think when he did the Batman and whoever Justice League character, I really liked those issues. I mean, it wasn't just all about Batman. Obviously, Batman had a mission through those issues, but like so the, I'm willing to give him a chance. In the Batman Robin, right? Yeah, Batman, Batman and Robin. And? Or it was like Batman and Two-Face, yeah. Batman and Wonder Woman, things like that. So I think he can handle it. I think, you know, he's been doing some Teen Titan crossover work. I mean, I've seen him put spotlight not just on Robin, but you know, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think he can do okay. I'm, not, I'm, I'm willing to give him a chance. Yeah, that I'm more okay with. He's used to that. So we've seen his Batman and Robin, and I did enjoy it. Uh, that Robin silent issue when he was he died, that uh, where 
Batman didn't talk the whole time. That was that that's was a great powerful. Issue. That's one of the best issues ever. So we'll see. I know there's some shuffling going on at DC. Christopher Priest, uh, obviously, uh, off of Justice League, and we're, I'm not sure how much longer he'll do Deathstroke because he was at Marvel's thing. So I feel like right now there's a little shakeup, and we do know actually there were some people who were reporting who showed evidence because oh, like four or five months ago, people asked Tomasi how long are you gonna be on Superman. He says we're on we're scheduled to be on till 400 issues. And people were like, well, now they're not. So obviously, Ben is coming in, shook that up, and they're like, oh, okay. But they're okay with it, it seems like. Yeah. They're okay with it. They're definitely sad about it, but they're okay with it. So it's definitely going to be a change. Hopefully, like you said, the renumbering thing kind of is a little bit of a moral thing to do. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Right. Uh, but if it's justified, like you said, uh, I'm okay with it. So we'll just have to uh, test the waters. And there's a couple choi- a couple times we'll have to test it before we can try. Do comics have a limit of you can only be a thousand issues long? No. Oh. Okay. No, well, actually, same number. Be 1, it's just Superman. Oh, so everything else is going to continue to go. Yeah, it's just, just Superman. Superman is right. gonna, not even Action Comics is going to continue yep. on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Then it doesn't bother me nearly as much. Right. That's what just... I mean. It feels like if they're just doing Superman, there's a reason for it. Okay. I misunderstood. I thought everything was getting renumbered. Mm-hmm. I thought, well, no. fuck that shit. Superman. No, just okay. Superman. Roots of the Swamp Thing.com, your definitive online source for all things Swamp Thing. Uh, Holland Files number two is out, Garrett. How is it? Holland Files two was awesome. A lot of cool like images that you haven't got to see in Holland Files number one. So definitely looking forward to finishing this bad boy. And that's not the only thing. If you want to learn more about Swamp Thing, Alex, where would you go? You're going to go to Roots of the Swamp Thing.com. Make sure you stay in touch at Roots of the Swamp Thing.com on Twitter at DC World Swampy, <laughs> Facebook.com slash Roots of the Swamp Thing. Speaking okay. of which, uh, not speaking of which, actually, a little bit. Uh, Center of Comics this week. Uh, Speaking of that young animal imprint, Milk Wars Part 1. This is Justice League of America and Doom Patrol from uh, Steve Orlando, Gerard Way, art by ACO. And there's a page of art from somebody else, too. Who was it here? I don't remember. Uh, Bond villain? Yeah, I believe that's her. Uh, we get a story. Uh, very strange. <laughs> I... Alex, what do you think? You know, I was reading this story. Here's the first thing that popped in my head when I'm reading this. I was like, I guarantee you Alex uh, is really confused by this. Not confused. Not nope. enjoying it. Did you enjoy it? No. I enjoyed bits and pieces of it, but I was so confused on what the fuck I was reading. And I understand that um, it's the milk is make, is retconning things, right? right? And I just was like, what the hell am I reading? It, it just it seemed like I almost needed to be high to be reading this. I uh, Just for it to even be enjoyable. Cause I'm I was on just, the same boat. I did not enjoy this issue. I, oh my I, what I was looking forward to about this the most was hoping to like clear up like the Doom Patrol and like have a good story and fun interaction with those characters. But instead, it's doing that thing that Gerard Way has done a lot where it's just trying to confuse you. Like It's not trying to give you a A to B plot line, which is fine. I mean, you can challenge your readers, but... You know, I was looking forward to this book to have a good time, and it w- it felt more like work to me than it was having a good time. I got bored about halfway through. Yeah, and I was like, okay, and there's, and, and there's too much text. Let yeah. the art do some work. There was a great artist on here. Yes, you can't even see it. There's so many word bubbles. Agreed. There were some great two page spreads. There were things that I did like, but it had nothing to do with even the story. All it was was the art that I really enjoyed. I um love this issue. Of course you do. Here's the thing about wow. it, though. Here's the thing about it, though. When I first started reading it, I was with you guys. I was so confused, and I was not enjoying it at all. And there's a point in here when you see that those, the, uh, what are they called? The Neighborhood Watch of uh, New Jersey or something like that. I yeah. Uh, when they changed to the Justice League, that it snapped in place for me. You know, this reminded me a lot of, and it would be no surprise to anybody in this room or in listen to this podcast, remind me a lot of Graham Morrison, and here's why. A lot of Grant Morrison stories, especially like Final Crisis and things like that, are so confusing at first. And then something happens where it clicks all into place and then the rest of it, and then it all makes sense for me at least. And I I got to a point when I was at the end of this, I was like, I guarantee if I reread this right now, all of it makes sense and I would enjoy it way more. But there is a lot of where it feels like you're trying to run up to a car that's already going and you're not with it. And then when you catch up to it, then you're like, okay, everything's good now. No, this was like I was running towards the car that was already going <laughs> 60 miles an hour. I tripped on a rock it's and bashed very my meta. face into the if front. If you don't enjoy and that's why I was reading this, and I was like, I enjoy like reading about comic book creators, reading about the comic book business, and reading about comic book history, like the, how the business used to be. And that's what this book is a lot of. It's a lot very meta, very being like, they're reckoning heroes to be more uh, mainstream, basically. So that's why Lobo, when he took the milk, he became all slick and he became like that new Lobo yeah. that they tried to introduce in New 52 and all these other characters to try to make them 
more palatable, palatable for the mainstream. And that's what Recon the Business is trying to do, is take these superheroes, get rid of all the things that make them interesting, all the things that make them weird, and just try to make them people. gritty and dark and like make them so that more people would enjoy them. And Milkman is the main the main uh, bad guy in this, and he we assumed because everybody turned back and we they thought he was Superman, but he's not actually. He's just somebody else who uh, uh, has the powers of Superman, and so he got away. But everybody else is part of the Justice League of America. That's why this crossover starts up. But I so for a while I was confused because like the retcon business, and it starts with them in an office and him saying, "Hey, show me some universes," and he's showing like what he can change. And so then they're in charge of going to different places. I mean, like, I'm going to change that and that and that. So he's like the studio head, basically, or DC Comics, like, corporate being like, hey, uh, yeah, Superman's red trunks, that people won't like that anymore. Let's change it to something else. So it was very meta. So if you're not on that level, and that's why I said um, when I was reading this, I know uh, Alex really isn't into, like, reading that kind of stuff. I was like, I don't think, like, for me, an enjoyment was, this is kind of funny because it's making fun of the comic book industry. Uh so it, there's another level to it that I'm sure a lot of people reading this are going to be like, I'm not really reading it for that kind of stuff. But the story overall, the art was great. Yeah, it was. By the way, uh, I do agree there's a lot of text, but I think for this story to be told, especially with all that subtext, um, there needed to be a lot. But I do agree there was a lot. It could have been a little bit less, but still. I mean, I, I understood the story. I mean, uh, with the business like Retcon and things like that and how they're, Basically, there's something in the milk that's changing them and whatnot. It's just the way that it was described in Solicit and like things I was looking forward to going into it, Like that was way different than what I got by the time I got out Agreed. of it. So um, I'm still going to get the next issue because, again, it could be like Grant Morrison. I was feeling that same way because he likes to tell those kind of stories yeah, that does. there's like a key item you need for the whole issue, the whole series to make it all make sense. That's what I mean. If you read Final Crisis ever, uh, for how many issues? Is it 12 issues? That's six. Six? Like when you get to four or five, it's like between four and five. You're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Right. But it's like you got to wait for a while to get there. And I know that's not a lot of people's cup of tea to be like, oh, you got to read four things to get the whole thing. But which is weird that it's your cup of tea. It is with Grant because he's proved to me that. Yeah, he. No, I understand that. I'm just saying, more generally (laughs) speaking. But we like reading four things out of five is not. That's the thing. Saying I felt at least with the Umbrella Umbrella Academy that it was very strange and weird. But since I read it, you know, we did it for the book club, yeah. I had to read the whole you thing. You read all five in a row. I believe if that was coming out, I would have done one issue and be like, okay, this is way too weird for me. Um, because it was, there was some stuff like that in there, too. Uh, maybe not so blatant as this, as this is, but there was some subtext in there. There were weird things in Umbrella Academy, but I, I now, to be fair, I read them, quote unquote, issue to issue, because I have the issues. That obviously doesn't mean I read them once every month. Anyway, um, I didn't have a, I didn't have a problem with that though. Like I like I like weird books, but I think you're right. It being the fact that it's actually tied into real things that I don't know anything about really, that I was at a, a disadvantage. Yeah, because like there's parts in here when they're even talking about like we're comic characters. Like let me just reveal your art, and then that there's a page where there's fucking comic covers, yeah. <laughs> and they like change them back, and she that's how she does that. So there's like it's very like. They're aware they're in a comic book. They're like it's, it's very Grant Morrison esque, and that's Jar. I know Jar Wade loves Grant Morrison from the Umbrella Cam we read. We read it. He talks about it for a while. And, there, and doesn't Grant do a forward in the Just trade? Yeah. So it, yeah. Uh, when I was reading this, I was like, okay, I know. And then I read some Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol is a hundred percent like this. Yeah. Doom Patrol is very meta, very strange, and so I think a lot of that prepared me for this. So if you're going into the second leg, like, it's going to be like I said on the forecast. Like a fun kind of romp. It should be fun, but also it's going to be a lot of work to like it. And maybe like you don't want to do that. And that sounds like if I told somebody on the street, hey, you got to work to like this thing. <laughs> That's not a great thing to say. But yeah. for somebody like me that I knew, like when I started reading it and when I got to that part, I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Uh, I'm okay with it. I know, I know it's, it's not, this is one of those things where it's, I know it's not for everybody. Right. This oh, no, I, I, I wouldn't give anybody else this to read no. other than you two. Are you getting Batman Mother Panic next week? Oh, yeah. I'm going to get the whole thing. I'll get all five. Even if I hate this book, those covers are enough to make me go, yeah, that's some good looking book. Um, but I gave this issue a four, and that's including the Ooh, art. I gave it a six. I gave it a nine. Because my milk was sour in this book. My milk my my milk was bad. Like It was. It had chunks I gave it, it a nine, and I'm lactose intolerant, baby. So you know what that means. You're hey, going to throw up later. What do you think about him attacking that dog? <laughs> For another reason, you knocked it down, probably. 
they he didn't he didn't kill them though. He just fed them all milk. So see now that didn't make sense to me. He wasn't actually killing them. They no, be... he gave them all milk. That's why he was. So they all lactose intolerant. So they were in the basically the transformative process. Oh, I, so, he okay, changed okay. Them all. That's why they were when they showed. So up, it's not even there. It's not even heroes. In this, it's everybody. Yeah, they're changing. Everybody. Is getting retconned. They're changing everybody. They're retconning everybody to be how they want to be, rather than the, the, letting them be themselves. Okay. I have a feeling that, like you said, this is going to be one of those things that I'm going to read all five of them and be like, oh yeah, that really was good. But right now, issue one has left a sour taste in my mouth. Milk room. I would say that if you're a fan of Graham Morrison, A, yes, pick it up. Draw Away, obviously. If you're a fan of Draw Away or his Doom Patrol, pick it up. Um, but I would say also that if you're a fan of, like, if you ever read Marvel The Untold Story, if you're a fan of, like, reading comic book news and, like, reading about the industry itself, I would say to pick this up. However, if you're looking for, like, hey, I want to read a team book event that's, that's going to be uh, a little weird... It's going to be a lot weird. So if that's not your cup of tea, then it's like a David Lynch story. Like it doesn't make sense 100 percent unless you're reading the subtext and like reading what he means behind the meaning. So and that's weird to say, but I think it'll maybe make sense at some point. Yeah. Alex, I don't just I don't know. I, I'm glad you made this the first, but I'm just I'm still wrapping my brain around stuff. I think a problem I was is with that, you. I told you like the, for I, the first like third of it. Are you reading Ice Cream Man? Like that's the whole time I look at that cover. Oh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be so good, uh, and it, it wasn't. Did you enjoy the character of Milkman, Milkman Man? Yeah, I, I mean, don't like have I, enough spotlight. Like I did, but yeah, the the few very few things he had wasn't enough to make me go, yeah, that character's really cool. And yes, I got that he's not actually Superman; he's just a, a superish man. I did. It did make me laugh, and it made part of it was the art when he goes to the house, and they're like, "You can't come in here," and he's just like. Do 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 do, and he crush, crushes her muff open and pours milk glug, glug to everybody, and then you see the dog, and he's like, you see the glug, <laughs> it just made me laugh. It's <laughs> so obviously like it's not 100 percent serious. There's it's very like weird, silly, and she even says like be as weird as you want to be, and like I think that's what this is. It's not going to be a mainstream like event. It's going to be super weird. Well, I think it's going to be one of those things that I I'm going to now that I know what to go into on issue two and so on. It probably won't be as big of a deal, but it it was almost too weird for me, and I like weird things. That sounds weird. <laughs> that sounds bad to say, but anyway, let's go on to something else. Yes. We got Realm, issue five, written by Seth Peck and art by Jeremy Hahn. Uh, this issue, we got the uh, the climax's first arc. Was it the climax? There I guess a, I would say so. I would. I think. Yeah. Isn't this the end of at least the first arc? It is. I read the solicit it is the end. because I wanted to know when the trader came out, and this is the last one of the arc. It said it was awesome. It was great. Holy cow! Like this, I, get, I, yeah. I mean, this book. This book had uh, a lot of art telling you the story and letting you see things where you know our, our previous book we just talked about jabbered on until the jaw fell off. Yeah, um, we got like a crack in like being. That was helping out the goblins for some reason. I didn't know. If, I didn't know if the goblin actually or the um, the crack. I don't think it's a crack, thing. and it's like Starro. It looks like Starro. Behold, yeah, yeah, kind of like Starro. I don't know if Starro was there to actually help anybody, or if he just happened to show up and was causing problems. And the goblins took advantage of the fact. Well, that you know that girl there. wearing the mask. Yeah, that's Rook. with the goblins. No, not Rook. oh the rabbit. Right. Yeah, I think she's the one that like conjured up. This is she a sorceress, sorrow? you think? I think, because remember, so the cliffhanger of this issue, it doesn't mean anything. Basically, there's this red pit that this girl crime, climbs out of, and I feel like that's her, but I'm not sure, because you can't see them. Yeah, you just see, you just see. Uh, I mean, that's a big red pool, this girl's eyes come up, and then she walks past, and that's right. all you see. Um, But yeah, there was a lot of cool action. Uh, we got to see every character having a big part in the story. Uh, we have Burke and David. You know, Doctor Burke dies. Yep. Trying to protect, not to protect David, but to come fight with him. Yeah, and so he got stuck in the crossfire of some goblins. So he died, and one of the things about their mission they're on is trying to get Burke to no David or Bur- no, well Burke and David. Okay, but Burke has all the secrets in that little flask thingy. Yep. Um, David's got powers. We all know he has like Shazam powers, mm-hmm. basically. Um, which was I was uh. I've, actually, I forgot that he had powers. Punch Marvin in the face. I know. <laughs> um, pretty brutal about... So, there was a character death, another character death. That was huge, this issue. Laszlo. Yep. Um, he's going to protect David. And he pushes David out of the way from the Kraken, basically. And 
he's like, you need to get out of here. And then David looks at him. He's like, holy shit. <laughs> and Lazo looks down. His right arm's missing. And he's like, oh, shit. What do you know? Yeah. He's like, oh, crap. That's and he, like, he, he s- puts up like a belt of grenades and he runs right up to the Kraken, just like Johnny Depp style. Yep. I was Street thinking of, I was thinking Hellboy from the yeah, first too. movie. Right. And blows the thing to smithereens. Um, well, doesn't he? I thought he just burned it because at the end, when David is the one who kills it. Yeah, David's the one who actually kills it. You're right. So he just, yeah, singes it basically. Because David, after you watch uh, Dr. Burke gets killed, yeah. uh, David goes Shazam Berserk and electrifies everything in the radius because he blows up the the fort or compound that they're in. Yeah. Who's the magic kid? What's his name again that like healed himself? Is it Zach? Yeah, Zach. So we see Zach can heal himself. Um, he's kind of, we don't know much about him. He's kind of like, uh, he's not a wizard per se, but he's like some kind of magical being that is going to propel yeah. the story forward. Um, we didn't get, a, you know, the weird thing, there wasn't a lot of character building necessarily. It was just right. a lot of, this was a lot of action. But already we have casualties. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. Which, th- which kind of bugged me though. Yeah. Well, I mean, just a little bit that. Some main character, I mean, main characters are dying. And I yeah. get that's, you know, the whole point of the story in Fellowship of the Ring. Um, who's the ranger? Yeah. But, not Faramir, but Boromir. Boromir, yeah. yeah. He, I know he died. I mean, I get it, he dies. Characters are going to die. It's just this book took a, a wicked turn of main people got to die. But enough of the good, I'm not saying that he wasn't a good character, but enough of the powerful characters yeah. stayed around that it's not the end of the world. Uh, we still get, is it Eli? Yep. He's the werewolf guy. Who's yeah. the one wearing the leather jacket? Yeah, no, you're That's right. Yeah, Eli's because Eli's the And then Molly's Zach. the archer. Rook is the badass lady wearing the owl mask or is whatever. It, is it a girl? Yeah, is it's Rook a, girl. a woman. Okay. Yeah, Rook's a woman. Okay. She's like a librarian. Um, nice. Kicking yeah. ass. And actually, I saw. I thought Will. it was cool. There's, it's Will. Yeah, Will. It's the main character. There is a, um ad that you can buy the actual Rook helmet. I saw like, that. Like live action style. I'm like. I don't know if you've got enough issues out that you can generate that kind of popularity for it quite yet, but it's still cool that you can buy that. I think being a, a guy who's getting the book, I'd be like, oh, that's really sweet. I want to get Did that. Did you laugh when Will points to Rook and says, Rook, go kill things? Captain telling Hulk to go smash. Right. That was cool. It, so, was, it was really good. I think this is one of those books that, Marvin, it's, it's going to have your fantasy for it. I know you'll never read it. but Plot-wise, I don't think it's super dense yet. No. I think, like I said, that's why I get the feeling it's going to be a long-term book. The first four seemed dense. Seemed yeah. like there was a lot to, st- to tell. And in this this issue really did kind of simmer down the... Kind of, well, the explosion of action, but yeah, you get a little less story yeah. then. So um, I gave it a 9 out of 10. I, I, liked, I, I liked the last issue, but I thought this one was way better. I thought 4 was good, but 8, I mean, yeah, 5 was way better. Holy shit. I don't even, I don't even know what number we're talking it's about It's like a PBR, <laughs> me and my system. Uh, I would agree. I think I would give it a 9. I really did enjoy this issue. Um, not perfect because there were things that bugged me, right. but I did enjoy it. So we have something to look forward to when 6 comes around. Because um, uh, how long did it say when 6 will come out? No, I don't remember when it told us. I don't know if it's going to be. I don't. I can't imagine. Maybe it'll be, be next. next month. I think it's March. Isn't that announced at all? I checked because you guys had a question whether or not it's an ongoing on the uh, forecast. So actually, when you guys were talking about the forecast, I looked it up, and the six is not solicited at all. So I'm not sure. End of the book. That would suck. If um, that was the end of the book, nothing got resolved, <laughs> and there's no finish to so, this. So you know, solicits go out three months. So at least for the next three months, it's not going to come out. So April. Maybe. April or May. You have to check in, fl- in February when this list come out this month to see yeah. what's on there. Um, by the way, uh, the pictures are for so- social media, so I don't need you. S- They're never good <laughs> pictures. Well, maybe if you're not looking at me like that. Yeah, I, did, I did really good because I watched you for like two, like at least 30 seconds holding your freaking camera up at my face. <laughs> Follow like- us on Facebook and Twitter because of these pictures. Uh, I'm also glad that I was only out during that part because you guys, I know I heard you guys say somebody died and I don't know who it is because said two people died. So uh, when I catch up, it'll be fresh <laughs> for me. <laughs> I said two people died. <laughs> All right. Next, we got Dark Knight's Metal number five uh, written by Scott Snyder, uh, art by Greg Capullo. Um, you can't even see who does what because all their nicknames, but we get uh, Jonathan Glapion probably on inks or colors and FCO Placencia on colors or inks, one of those two. FCO does colors, so. Okay. So, metal number five. Um, you know, I think we all figured out 
that you can't wait this long between issues. And um, did I miss something? Dude, I really... I feel did. like I missed something. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, there is some parts that it seems like that, but I mean, it, it did end with Hawkman. The the Bruce and uh, Clark, I understood. Right. It was the Wonder Woman stuff I barely understood. I don't remember Shazam being there. I know she's with Kendra. No, it's Black Adam, right? Who would I Black say? Black Adam. Who would I said say? Shazam. It's Black Adam. Who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that start that were like midway through, and I was like, did we end on this? I'm not sure we ended on this. Because I just remember Wonder Woman talking to Kendra, and Kendra turned into Black Hawk. Well, I think because it was in Black that Hawk. Justice League crossover. And That's that, what I'm was pretty sure. way, that was way before four. That ended oh, before four came say, out. It feels like there was something in between us that wasn't metal. That was one of the tie-ins, and they told a little bit of the story there. So that way we could jump into this issue being all action. Right. But then I don't know the setup. I don't know what we're what we're doing, who was involved. It's poor planning. I I this book actually I could give two shits about this. I'm just getting it now just to get it. I'm glad I'm not the only one because I thought you guys were gonna come in and be like, this thing's great, but it feels like there's one left. Yeah, and it that's what feels what's like crazy. I don't know. It feels like nothing has happened. No. It feels the, like we're still in Act One. Like, how are they going to wrap it up in one up? issue? No, it's they're not. Oh, there's going to be they're so not. much shit. I know there's going to be epilogues yeah. galore. Well, um, I think the only six pages of Batman and Superman story, like that whole story, should be the metal book. Everything else, holy shit, that's too much. Well, here's the just, thing, right? Because the only thing that's going to get resolved next issue is Superman and Batman come back, right? And then maybe they vanish all these, uh, all the villains so, to back to their universe. That's it. Yeah. Everything else, like Plastic Man, that can't be... There's no way they're going to wrap that up. There's no way to wrap up the Hawkeye. Well, Wild Hawkeye. Hunt comes out next, and then it's Metal Six. What's Wild Hunt supposed That's to be? That's one with Grant Moore's. I know, but what's the, what's um, the premise It says of the it. fall of the multiverse. My guess is that um, Wild Hunt is going to be the big duel that we're all going to want to see, and then Six is going to be a lot of jibber-jabber that no one gives a shit about. You know what this issue reminded me of? Reminded me of in, uh, you know, even though Justice League of America and Doom Patrol Milk Wars was confusing. This book is convoluted. And it reminded me of how it reminded me of what I don't like about Scott. And what he what it is is that he throws so much at you that you have to be like, I'm sure like this is what I thought when I kept reading it. I'm sure some of this makes sense to somebody and is good to somebody, but not me. Like I don't need this kind of story. I don't need a story that seems so deep. There's a lot of history. Like he, there's all this hidden history he keeps talking about. All these and like the moments are good. I feel like this event has been good moments. Right. Every once in a while, there's like a scene. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like when Wonder Woman's fighting Black Adam, and then the man who or the the bat who laughs came in and hit her with the uh, mace. Mace. Cool. But then he just takes off or something. I don't know what what happened. Where did he go? I, that's the one thing is that the Batman who laughs. It he's just there to toy with everybody. He's not even he's, a threat right now. He's like in front of her in one panel with the mace. Next thing you know, she's heading towards. Hawk uh, girl, and I don't know what happened to him. He just took off. He shoots her, his guns, blowing smoke. Yeah, I know. No, after that. Like, how after. does he leave? He just takes off. He doesn't even care. He just, talk, he just talks to her. He goes, oh, I don't want to kill you. And then he oh, just takes right. off. It's like, what happened? So it's a lot of good moments. Being, and I hate, I don't, I don't, oh, I hate the wrong word. But can we please stop, especially in this book, so many times where the heroes will be doing something, all of a sudden one of them gets attacked, and boom, boom, it's, hey, it's, uh, you know, it's, Man who lasts. Oh, it's um, how was his name? Black um, Black Adam. No, 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 Aquaman. Oh, Black Manta. Black Manta. All of a sudden, he shows up too. There's a lot of like them doing stuff, and I was like, "Oh, I got shot!" And then, oh, well, it's somebody like four times in this book. Like that moment works once, maybe not four times in the same book. They did it for and da da da. da we got the return of Martian Manhunter. Yeah, that's which, which, he, that wasn't even I a was, good reveal. I know. I was just like, "What?" I turned that's the what page. Boom, he's there. Okay. The off screen talking, and then boom, we cut to who it is. Four or five times in this book. Let's stop. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. This is just... I. The art by Capullo was great. It is. But, but it was muddled by Scott's story. I, I I don't mean to be hating on Scott. I, I do like how he writes. But I'm finding lately he is, he is definitely not my cup of tea. And it's not even because he writes convoluted stuff. It's that he doesn't write anything that pertains to anything pertinent. It's just to tell a story that isn't a story to me. You know something that Grant Morse... And I, I'm not going to keep talking about like Grant Morrison like he's some guy but maybe um, <laughs> something that he does and you know Garrett he'll go back to like Silver Age and notice like one thing about Batman and then take that aspect and like bring it to the modern age and like bring it up so that it, it's there's a sense of continuity but it's not like 
Science it's like he ca- he kind of makes it his own, and then it's like, oh, this thing's been around forever, and that's how he built history, and that's how he built like all oh, this thing's always been here. You guys just haven't noticed. Where I feel like Scott just like makes up something and says, hey, by the way, even though they haven't talked about this for seventy years, it's always been there, and that's like constantly what he does. Where, and I I feel like that make, well, makes it feel empty. A lot of the stuff feels empty because he's telling me. Oh, this has been around this whole time, or these guys have been in this universe, and like he's building all this history, but there's nobody showing me all this. Yeah, and I think that's what these five issues have been: is a lot of telling me, "Hey, by the way, this is important." And I've never seen in these five issues anything's been important. I just think about how these read and trade. Think about all the shifts in perspective in this book alone. <clears throat> like, there's no one. There, like, what's the A story in this? I don't even no, know. I don't I even do know because the B, C, and D story are all now right. so intertwined. They're that, shoved down your throat. Yeah. You would think that it would be Batman and Superman, but like they're barely in this book. Yeah. And also, like, if it, when it gets collected, you're gonna have to get all those uh, tie-ins and stuff. I would like hope that. Like, that that when you get the collection is literally a metal collection. Because yeah. the best things about this book have been the those tie-in tie-ins stuff. with the Red Death, and those ones were great. Yeah. But I think those work because the story's straightforward and it's like, hey, it's about this guy. It's not about 15 different people going to 15 different places. Oh, by the way, this one thing that you're going to go grab, there's history behind it. It actually is this mysterious metal that, and actually, like, it was ninth metal, but now it's the ninth metal. Hey, by the way, there's nine metals. And it's like, whoa, like, one thing at a time here. And they call the metal, what do they call the metal for Batman? Like, the bat Batanium or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, and then we found out that, that what's his name, uh... Signal has you now he's a mutant too. It happened yeah. in this book like yeah. that's so long ago in a moment that we find out doesn't really matter in this book overall. No, it's just a sell book. It's just a point that came up and then it's over. So there's that's what I said. This book is like a lot of moments. It seems like you know like he's like oh people love tricks, people love Cheerios, people love frosted mini wheats. Just throw one all in a fucking bowl and like, give it to them. But they're they're not good together. No. They're all good on their own. They're all good moments. But as a story, it's too much. It's it's. I, there's no sense of an editor being like, hey, like, what's going on in this book? Like, There's too much going on. Like, cut some stuff out. The one thing that will fix metal for me, and I was actually going to be um, a, just be a dick and be like, I just want Batman to beat the shit out of all the evil Batman. I don't. I actually want the Justice League to come together and fight their respective villain. Right. So Cyborg fights the uh, murder machine right. and let them beat the shit out. Don't, obviously can't kill them. But I want to watch some like Superman suplex that Doomsday Batman into the ground. Yeah, and just I don't I I want something to at least be good from these because I'm reading these going, wow, you may be calling back to old things that I don't I don't I don't even know anything about this stuff. This means nothing to me other than Martian Manhunter showed up. Whoop de do, and he had nothing there to do with it. There was way more buildup in the actual Rebirth comics about Martian Manhunter coming back. This felt mm-hmm. like oh punchline they'll never see it coming i'm like he's in two uh, panels and one of them's just like hey guys you need to get out like some sort of day six machina yeah day six machina being like and he just happens to be investigating on the hawkman oh where have you been i've been here the whole time guys yeah Yeah. i've been investigating uh dionysium or whatever i don't know it's just i this is another this is the week week for like uh, this week got really crummy yeah just i there's a lot five of, on this book for me. Oh, I'm giving it a four. Like this is this is my lowest rating of a book I've had in a while. Both DCs. I'll, I'll give it a four too. I also didn't like. I don't know when or who decided that Deathstroke is Deadpool all of a sudden, and he's telling he's like the jokey guy in this book doing puns. And I was like, since when? <laughs> I've never seen him like that before. Obviously, he's a dick. He's been a dick forever, and that's where the humor comes from from him being a dick. But he's not telling puns. He's not being the joke. He's not guy. funny though. He thinks he. I mean, it's he. It's funny to him being a dick. He like, makes a couple of fish jokes. Yeah. And he like I forgot. There's one word where he uh, puts in fish, like in place of a different word to make a joke. And I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen him like that before. And he gets taken out like a little bitch. So, I don't. The whole thing he just reads like it was a better idea than a story. So reads like Civil War two. Kinda. Yeah. Actually. Uh, it's going to be uh, kind of controversial, but I think I enjoy Civil War II more than this. So, All right. Hey, Pull us out of this shit. Let's go. Moon Knight, issue number 191. This, Garbage. This is uh, Max Bennis. Bemis, excuse me. Um, oh, oh there's, where's this? Who else? Jason Burroughs. Uh, Jason Burroughs and uh, Matt Lopez on the colors. This is coming off of, by the way, so I read 190, 191 back to back. Same. Um Alex, maybe it was just the way you talked it up. I thought Y90 was great, but it wasn't like this mind-blowing issue that you talked about. Not that it gets you. I just think that you set it up at that level. Obviously, so you don't care about that was, book. There was no way that was going to live up to that for me. However, 
Then we got to this issue. And this issue did blow my mind. I thought this was really good. Oh, really? This, this issue was so, so for me. I'm with Marvin on that. This issue was fucking great. It was great. God, it was so good. First off, the humor in this book. Now, this is funny. Like it's justified. That, like, oh, the whole book, the series itself. No, this issue. This issue that we're reviewing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> well, you, I mean, in general, yes, but in this issue specifically. I forget. I don't actually find anything actually funny. I just go, hmm, that's my <laughs> laugh. Um. I do like the pl- part when, so he finds out he has a daughter in the last issue. That's how it ends. So this issue starts with, by the way, now the, the name of the arc makes sense. Crazy runs in the family. Uh, the beginning starts with them. You know, you think that it's going to be like a standoff and he's going to take his wife and kid and he'll have to, sorry, what's his name? Who? Moon Knight? Mark. So I, I was going to say well, there's Mark. Spectre. It's a lot about Mark and Jake. It's Jake Mark Walker. right now, right? Yeah. So a Moon Knight, we'll just say Moon Knight, because that's his general uh, personify, persona. So uh, he's, you know, they're all there. And the assumption is the way it would work out in any other story is that they take those two. He doesn't want to start anything. So then he has to go rescue them. But his wife's crazy too, or his, his ex wife, or his ex girlfriend, wherever it is, uh, stabs <laughs> one Bush of the guys, Bushman in the leg, Bushman in the leg, and then he kicks uh, the Sun King or Sun God. Sun King, right? Raw. Sun King. And then they get out of there. He takes his daughter out there. And you want to find funny when he she's like, you're going to go back in there? What are you, crazy? And there's that panel where he just looks back at her and smiles like a little, you know, like, and you know he's going to be. That part was cool. He, like, here's an example, 100%. If you ever want to know what we're talking about, just show me. You don't have to tell me. Because you could very well in this story, he could have been like, yeah, I'm crazy. And yeah, then I got it. Yeah, obviously I know that. But just the smile alone, like him being like, like yeah, I'm crazy. Like crazy is Like that's crazy enough. Does. You let your artist tell me what he's thinking and feeling. And then he runs back in there. Um, she, uh, so they have a little more fight, by the way. Um, him using that, uh, like, moon knife, like, as, like, I mean. His battering His battering thing. thing. That was fucking cool. Yeah. See him hold it, like, fist style, like, slashing people. And I do, Sweet. like, his pants uh, start on fire, so he takes them off and then kicks them in the sun uh, king's face. And I laugh because I was just like, I've never seen that before. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's pretty crazy. What, what a almost cheap comical move. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, but also it's like, hey, that makes sense. Your pants are on fire and you want to throw at this guy to distract him. Or him putting his mask on while he's in that. Does this outfit. help you? That's what I was yeah. say. Now he's in his, uh, you know, boxers and he puts on his mask and being like, is this better? He goes, God, yes. <laughs> and like, they just want to fight each other. <laughs> like, they're both fucking crazy. And, yeah. and it, it never wavers from, hey, this guy's crazy. Now he has a kid and you think that the writer would be like, okay, now he has to be a little bit more sane. He's with a, he's, you know, he's a superhero for God's sake. He's like, no, he's still crazy. No. Uh, goes in the back and his daughter's like, hey, don't burn my swing set down. And then they go back inside and then on the walls it says, we have your queen. Which for me, it was like, that's, that's panel's great. Mm-hmm. She's like, where's mommy? And it says, we have your queen. Um, cuts to, he, he tries to explain to her like what's going on, like his whole multi personality thing, yada, yada. And she kind of, once again, show me don't tell me he says well um i kind of look like jake but i'm not jake i'm his brother she goes wait if he's my uncle that makes you and he smiles again he just smiles and looks at her and she goes oh and that's enough for her to for us to be like oh she gets it but he's lying to her because jake Jake persona is the one that created her I mean, in general, if you're really going to get down to it... It's the same body. It's the same person. I know. I know. No, I, know but, I know what you mean. But, but that's that's what made me the most happy, and that's why I thought last issue was so good, is that it was Jake going behind Mark's back and sleeping with her. That's why I was like, holy shit. No wonder Jake is trying so hard to distract Mark from everything else. I was like, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah, There's going to be a lot of conflict so that's, between Jake and Mark. Too. So that, for me, was what made last issue so good. You're right. This issue was amazing. I do like the subtlety in art. Like, you can see his back and like all the bandages and stuff, so you know... Like, this guy's not invincible. He's getting hurt. He's all banged up and ready. And he's in, now he's going to go in and save uh, his ex-girlfriend. Or ex-wife or ex-girlfriend. Were they married? No. It's girl- he liked it's her, girlfriend. but he was always too busy doing stuff. The The truth gets out. I think Ra's a crazy bastard. Like He's a villain yeah. that I'm like, he's maniacal. Oh, yeah. The, that's right. I thought the truth gets out. That's right. Truth, truth got out. Truth gets out. Yeah. We have Bushman, and they're all now like conspiring against Mark. Um I did find hilarious that scene when the Bushman is sitting next to the truth. He's like, I can't stop eating because I feel powerless. <laughs> yeah. And I feel powerless because I can't stop eating. He goes, but I'm not going to do drugs because I'm a drug dealer. That'd be unethical to, or unprofessional to do drugs. And then he's like, hey, it's happening again. He's, and then 
the truth like, hey, man, I can't help it. Like, it just happens every once in a while, <laughs> which is his power. If you don't know anybody listening, is that he can make people tell the truth and they go kind of go insane, kind of crazy with the truth. So, uh, issue ends with um, him being like, hey, I gotta go save your mom. Uh, while I'm gone, John Paul's gonna watch you. And he opens the door and we got zombie John Paul. Now, is that a figment? Are they both crazy and see that? Or is that actually like, cause I don't think John Paul is him, right? Well, John Paul's been dead for, I don't know. This doesn't continue from Jeff Lemire's, right? I think no, it does. It's all one kind. It's all one. So I think, isn't John Paul dead? So you, are you saying he had a fourth personality that's now dead? Yeah, I think wasn't it his fourth personality and he Must died he in that story? Well, oh, I thought Frenchie was his friend. I think Frenchie was him. Frenchie's Jake Lockley. No. I thought, yeah. Jake Lockley Jake look, Lockley. I'm going to look it up. I'm pretty sure. I thought Frenchie was a different guy. So what do you, th- you, I know Alex, you love this series and you said this issue. Uh, what do you think about this issue? I think I, you, this issue specifically, you're, the fighting is so good. The, yeah. the, the action is, we got a lot of buildup and a lot of waiting for these two guys to finally meet. And like you said, all they want to do, is, they just want to fight. Yeah. It's who's better day or night. And I, I am so excited to watch uh, Moon Knight beat the shit out of people. Right. And I'm hoping that, because as of right now, I'm thinking who's fighting is Mark, right? Right. So you know there's at some point in time, Jake is going to come out he's gonna get and he's going to roll that mask up just enough so you can see his face and he's going to go berserk and beat the living piss out of him. You're right, John. Uh, Paul's so many different. I, 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 I am getting mixed up with Jake. They both look the same. So. Hmm. Um. Yes, yeah, so he must. He was dead the last one, so now he's brought back or something like that. Maybe by I, the power no, of. Well, I'll say um, there must be another god who. Yeah, brought him back. I don't know if it's Bast or if it's. Well, maybe Kanchu brought him back. Maybe. Uh, well, I'd say yeah. We'll find out. That's obviously. the crazy thing about this is that it is very serious in terms of like the violence. It's a very violent book in terms of the situations are real, but there's a lot of god stuff. There's a lot of joking humor around, so it's kind of a weird. A uh, book that and it takes itself super seriously, but also not serious at all. Like we have zombie John Paul now showing up, or John John Paul, yeah, John Paul, mm. uh, showing up, and we. It's not something I'm like, whoa, that's weird. It's something I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> and the, but then we get issue, you know, we get that moment between him and his daughter when he's telling her that basically, you know, I'm your dad, and so it's great. I thought it was great. This issue, the art's great too. I love the Jack, and I think we talked about before. Where's this guy been? I'm, I haven't seen anything yeah. with him before. I give it a nine and a ten. Nine, yeah. Oh, actually, this I, this has been the strongest issue we've had. It, the, no, 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 no. Of tonight for me. Oh, okay. I was no, 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 you were no, no. going to say last issue is still my favorite. Okay, I really like this. I would agree a nine. Yeah. But for me, this tonight that was the strongest issue I've had. Um, yeah, I would say it's tied with it with another book for me that you're about to talk about. So, well, we got uh, Punisher the Platoon number five. We got five of six, so we got one more after this. Uh, written by Garth Ennis and. Art by Goran Parlov. I think there hasn't been an episode of this show where I'm drinking something and I don't spill it on myself. Every single I don't time. know why you... And it always happens when you guys are doing something where you're not looking at me. <laughs> like, it's still running now down I can't stop face. looking at you. All of a sudden you guys just like look at me all of a sudden now I got beer all over myself. Good thing we don't uh, you know, record the show anymore. You could uh, steal a bib from your child. By the way, I, this, was, this issue was good. So this issue, yeah, it was great. I thought it was great. Um, the story is they, there's a platoon that got ambushed in the swamp or, and they're dead in the swamp, right? And so their mission, they were told, Hey, go over and recover their bodies. Then they'll leave any man behind. They got to send them back to the U S to get buried, which is a thing that they do, which is the thing that, you know, it, it's a righteous thing to do. And they even talk about at the beginning. They were debating. Yeah. We, like no man left behind. However, they debated for a while being like, yeah, but it puts us in danger <laughs> and like nobody's going to want me to die to send back some of these bones. Uh, so they get to the swamp and the whole time uh, Frank's like, we got to get out of here as soon as possible. Hurry up and uh, hey, radio out, radio out that we're here. And uh, is he asking for reinforcements or what's he asking for? Or then you want to well, get it picked up, right? And so they're, they're trying to get out of there. He's like, hey, we radio to we get picked up as soon as yeah. possible. We get these bodies out of here and they check the battery and the battery's dead. Somebody must have sold it in the black market, their other actual useful battery, and replaced it with a spare that it doesn't work. So they're fucked. He's like, hey, we got to get out of here. As that happens, uh, the yeah. female, I would say, uh, main antagonist of the story is up in the tree. She sees that they're in the swamp, and 
They're just sitting out there. She calls in to the. Uh, it's not the general. Who's? I don't think it's a. I thought it was a it's just colonel a captain? or just it's another higher ranking officer to send in below the main general that yep. we've been seeing, and it, she calls and say, "Hey, they're here! Like they're stuck in the swamp. Send everybody you can send." And he makes the decision to be like, "Well, the general really likes this girl. I'm gonna say that he would send send everybody." So he sends everybody. They go out there. Frank's like, "Let's back up into the woods." When they get back up into the woods, he goes, "We can't be out in the open like this." When they get out there, they come and it's just a firefight from both sides and it's basically everybody that they have the via Khan has in one platoon the frank's platoon yep. and the guy with the radio i forget what his name is tells him hey i have enough juice that i can send that one radio signal but i need to be higher than this to get it out so it's gonna be so weak so he goes i'll climb the tree and Bobby says that you know mortar shark going off so he climbs a tree and frank makes a plan being like Okay, cover stay up front. Everybody else take the wounded back, and I'll go. And then one of the guys, the platoon, is like, "Frank, you take them. I'll cover. I'll do the cover." And uh, while they're doing that, he gets an airstrike call that blows up uh, most of the vehicle that was there. And then the general f- hears about it, be like right before that happens, and he's like, "We got to get out there and turn everybody back. That's we can't send everybody out there." And then they mostly all die. However, when Punisher's getting pushed back, we see that she. Somehow they don't. They said they don't know how. Maybe she ran down and ran fast. Well, they made it seem like she was jumping through the trees. They said she she either jumped through the trees like a crazy person, yep. or she went down, ran between mortars that were going off, like the airstrike, climbed up into a tree. But she ends up in a tree either way. Yep. And she kills. Ambushes. She starts throwing grenades down, starts shooting people, ambushes Frank's platoon, and the last thing we see is she jumps down and stabs Frank in the back, and that's how this issue ends. And well, the next issue obviously will be about that, but. You know how we talk about this issue is kind of a slow burn. This issue was all action. This issue was all action, but it was it was. But there's like meaning behind it, right? Yeah, I say it, it's it's not just Frank. It's killing, not it's, you know what Frank? I don't think has killed more than he killed people in the second issue. Yeah, but he's he's been pretty low key for being the Punisher. He not, I don't At, think he killed one person in this issue. No, right? he's no. he's all doing the LT thing. He's giving direction on what you need to do. And even he gets told by, I think the other guy was either a sergeant who goes, no, LT, you take them back. Yeah. You guide them back. I will cover you. And the and, thing is, too, and they mentioned in this, is that the guy with the radio, when he's like, I'm going to go up top and do that, he goes, six months ago, and he's telling the story from the future when he's an old man. He goes, six months prior to that, I would have never done that. But there's something about being with Frank that he brings out the best in you because he's not out there. We see that he's not out there for himself. He's out there for that platoon. Mm-hmm. And it makes you want to do everything you can for that platoon, too. So it's turned this book, and even though it's called Puncher the Platoon, like if this book was just called The Platoon and it wasn't Frank Castle, it was just some other guy, this would be a great war comic. Like mm-hmm. so, but you had that kind of you know, narrative about this is the Puncher too, and you like is did this make him who he is? So we have that also going with it. But I would say, like, if you're interested in any kind of war comic, uh, we talked about the other side a couple months ago, in the last month, yeah. for the book club. This falls in line right with that. So you wouldn't even have to do anything about Punisher. You can get this and like that too. I thought this issue was, and that's the thing with this series. It's not, even though, like I said, it's, it's, I guess it is Marvel Universe. It's Punisher. It's not unrealistic. Like this is, I, when I read this, I still be like, oh, this is what actually happened. Like this is a real scenario that happened. Obviously not real people, but like something like this might have happened, even though it's a fictional story in this war. A lot of the war things are correct. And uh, the art's great. The art is not super pretty. It's not pretty in the sense that it doesn't look good. It's not pretty. I mean, it's not like flashy for flashy's sake. There's a lot of stuff that happens that is just to show how real and gritty it is. Um, but I like it. We got one left. I don't feel like, I feel like they can wrap it up on that one, obviously. But we're ready. We're down to the main confrontation. And uh, I think it's going to be a great little six issue thing. Do you think that the Punisher will be created? From Vietnam, because in all honesty, I think Frank is bringing the brothers to arm type. Of, I mean, he's he's making this platoon not just a platoon. It's these men aren't just out there for themselves; they are together in this. I think that something definitely happens here that is a building block to him becoming the Punisher. I don't know if he exactly become he doesn't become the Punisher right after this. Obviously, we know that's yeah. his family being killed, but there's there's enough that happens here that when his family gets killed, he reverts back to that person. I think if nothing else, it's he's I, my my guess would be it's the amount of death that he's seen. It's the amount of 
horrible people over here to the the conditions it's the dead bodies he's seen because one of the pictures you see here when they're in the bog or in the uh the swamp is you're watching maggots come through one of those dead people's eyes whether it's someone they're coming to get or just another dead body and also if you think about it something that's unlike frank in this whole series like he killed innocent people he didn't care about it that's not the punisher way punisher kills the people who need to be punished yep. the people who prey on the weak and stuff like that so her attacking him and then him her finding out why and him having to possibly kill her and knowing that she's justified and wanting to kill him maybe that's enough for him to be like okay this is where i learned to never hurt anybody who doesn't deserve to be killed anymore who's to say that frank castle is the punisher in this what if the punisher is the girl i think she is i mean it's I mean, it's that it, story right i mean that, that would make the most sense he killed her he killed her family and her family and, and uh, she wants vengeance on him and everybody else who's done wrong and everyone else who would have done wrong is in his platoon. And the stuff that she's been doing in this book is very Punisher-esque. Like the Punisher would jump throughout all the trees and jump down and kill everybody from the shadows and they wouldn't see him. Like that is Punisher. So I think it, it also is like, like you said, there's a double meaning behind this that this character is the Punisher of the story. Even though it is a kind of an origin story about Frank, it is saying, hey, maybe even he sees her and like that's where he gets inspiration for being like, I want to be like... She fought for the right thing. I got to fight for the right thing if yep. it ever comes down to it again. So it's great. This and the um, Moon Knight Moon Knight were my favorite. I wouldn't say that one is above each other because they're so different. One is like, this one's really real and like they're both, They were both nines for me. Yeah, yeah. They're both strong. They're both strong books. And this, like I said, when this six issue thing is out, collect it. Collect it. If you're into any kind of like a Vietnam War or war story kind of thing, uh, pick it up. It's good. Good, good, good. That is. Our, oh, oh, you have one sorry. more. Sorry. Our final book of the evening is Bonehead Number Two, with a story by Brian Hill and art uh, by Roald Marcellius. Um, we open on the book, uh, starting from last issue fifty six. Um, how does he get knocked out again? I don't remember him getting knocked out unless he fights the brother cop. And well, he, no, he shows up at the laboratory, and then the cops there, the brother. So maybe he's just getting recharged in some way or another. Okay, that could be it. Like, I guess I don't remember because the last thing I remember from issue one was him running into pumpkin juice right. and him beating up the other bad guys and then running away. So I guess after that, you know, so the we find out that Aleph's brother, who Aleph's the scientist of this bonehead that he's working with, um, he his brother used to be Black Death. Because, like, we even, issue one, we barely got talking about Black Death, but this issue, we find out more about him. Um, so, like, he is more like the vigilante that, like, did win out and whatnot. Like, he was famous, and then, you know, out of nowhere, he just kind of popped into thin air. Um, he's the Batman. Yeah, he was like the, Batman. Essentially. Right. The city didn't need him anymore, so he went away. And just like that. You know, we he became a gladiator because he thought he could help more in the justice system than he could as a vigilante. Um, so we get that backstory, and basically, gladiators telling his brother, like, "Hey, this is against the law. You can't let this because using boneheads is against the law. Um, they're not medically proven." And basically, Aelf explains that when he found Fifty Six, he was paralyzed. Um, he he couldn't. He can't speak. He can't and speak. So that's why he's helped him make his own. Visual um, language. Yeah, visual language. So the bonehead gives him, gets him out of paralysis, which is awesome. Like, think about, like, scientific studies. And so the gladiator, his brother's like, hey, like, I get that this is good for science now, but think about all the horrible applications you can use this for. What if he decides to do bad things with it? So that's where there's the conflict. Um, well, 56 wakes up, gladiator goes away, elf's like, hey, you need to go find your, uh, your robot. Your, your robot. Because if, you, if that gets found, then we're all screwed. So 56 goes to get his drone. And of course, once he does, it turns out that Pumpkin Juice had it this whole time. And Pumpkin Juice is just a huge fan of uh, 56, 56 because he wants him to join this gang, basically, of other boneheads. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like it's, they're a gang. And it seems like that they don't they want to do bad things. And we don't know yet. But it seems like they want to pull off some crimes or some heists rather than do things for the good of the people what's the oh it's tyrant was the name of the right the i assume bad guy boss right the lead of the group yeah. there so um 
Yeah, I mean, this is a very heavy science fiction book, not like concept wise, more like art style. And this is another one of those books that I think is great that the art gets to tell the story mm-hmm. more, especially with the main character that can't speak his own language. You see like emojis or certain symbols to represent what he's saying or thinking. There was some, I think it was an it was supposed to be angry. I think it was like a cloudy day, right, lightning the, bolt. Right. I was like, you know what? That's actually pretty clever. It's not, right. it's not up front. Hey, I'm angry. But it does give you that subtle thought, oh, probably a bad... He's kind of annoyed at you right now. Yeah. But then you get that sense, too, like, 56 is able to do parkour. He's very lightweight. Um, I think he he reminds me of Black Bolt in a way. Not, like, physicality-wise, but just because, like, how silent yeah. he is, but how powerful he can be. Um, so he's basically... His street cred is growing very quickly. I mean, this yeah. is only issue two. And so, right, the cliffhanger is Tyrant's like, well, if he can beat me... Then that's, he can be a part of it. He can be a part of the gang, and not saying that Fifty Six wants to be. He kind of just gets caught up in this thing that Pumpkin Juice is trying to recruit him for, basically. Yeah. I um, and you get to see uh, what was his name? Like Hideki, yep. which is the brother to Aleph, the cop, the gladiator. The gladiator. Yep. He uh, he goes back to his apartment, and in this metal case, he's got Black Death's the, his helmet, right. And it's almost like, I was like, oh my God, he's going to put it on and he's going to go out. Oof. I was, it, did, I was, it did build a lot of suspense because he's yeah. sitting there contemplating like the decision I made to be a gladiator. Is that really the right decision? Should I, I mean, did I make the right choice? And so he, that Black Death mask is just staring at him like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I should go back out there as Black Death. And I think he's going to return as Black Death. Oh, yeah. And when he does, it's going to be really badass. So I can't believe we're only two issues in, and there's already so much heavy story with not a lot of text. We get a lot of art telling the story, and it's fresh. It's nice having a book where you don't have to be handheld the whole time. My, It's not even a complaint, because it would make sense that all the boneheads, which are their helmets, would all look semi the same, other than coloration, or if you added mods to it. But it it does kind of not, I don't know if it rubs me the wrong way. Like, it it logically makes sense. It just, it does kind of bug me the all look. They all have the same facial structure. Yeah. And I was like, it'd be nice to see a little extra things. They've all like, got but different colors. think about colors. how many thousands of dollars those probably, or whatever the, the yeah. currency would be right at that point in, in time. So yeah. um, I think that. It's me, it's being, kind of, it's me right. being nitpicky. I get it's, you. So I get what just, you're saying. But it's probably like that was the base model. And then people just customize it yeah. the way they wanted to make it cool looking. I give this an eight. I actually, this, this series is pretty good. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going to give it a nine. I was really, I really like this one. I mean, I loved issue one, but I really love this a lot more because I like now that we're getting some plot into the mix because it's fun to look, like look at pictures. But I mean, if it doesn't yeah. make sense what's happening, it doesn't really do it for me. So uh, I give it a nine. And very much looking forward to the third issue because I think we're going to see some cool action coming up, some thicker story, and hopefully that return to the Black Death. I'm I'm kind of hoping that Fifty Six has to fight his way through the gauntlet of the Tyrant's group. Oh, that'd be cool to to go fight the Tyrant. Yeah. So whether or not that's going to happen, maybe not. But and, just, I, and you can tell it's not Fifty Six's plan. He just wants to get back. He's to just Aleph. he's just he's just going around town jumping around. Yeah. And if being a superhero fit the bill at the time, like you went to go save pumpkin juice from whatever they were, the dragon heads or whatever they were called, yeah, then, you know, he'll do it. But he wasn't going to go out of his way to be a hero. He just happened to get pulled into it. Right. So, very good book. Those are the comics that came out this week. That is last January. Ooh, last Wednesday in January. That's Milk Wars number one. That is uh, Platoon, excuse me, Realm number five, Metal number five. Moon Knight 191, Punisher Plot 2, number 5, and Bonehead, number 2. A lot of fives this week. Three fives, huh? And two of them are five of six, so there we go. Uh, make sure to, uh, I would say, if I'm going to choose any of the one to get into, um, wait for that Punisher to be done and get that, or otherwise jump on Moon Knight. That's good stuff. What? You going to say something else? Three fives. Yeah. Realm? Yeah. Metal? Yeah. Oh. Punisher. Yeah, okay. Three fives. Well, then... Mm-hmm. Other way would be the JLA one. What? Oh, three, five. Oh, okay, I thought you were saying three the fives. ratings. Yeah, five, okay, five, so and five. I was like, oh. Number five. Mm. Yeah, issue mm. fives. Got it. Today. I thought, the reason I asked is I thought you were giving Moon Knight an issue five. I thought, no, it was one eight, it's 191. 191. Okay. Supercon 2018, Return of the Con, September 28th, 29th, and 30th. Tickets on sale at supercon.com. Alex, we're going to be there doing a show, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to be there on the 28th doing a uh, live show for everyone. What's it going to be called? Wednesday Comics After Dark. Dark. 
And not only us are going to be there, a lot of people are going to be there. Phil Hester, right, Gary? Yes, Phil Hester, the uh, current artist of Batman Beyond. Uh, he's done other projects like Shipwreck. Um, he's done some Swamp Thing that you may or may not have seen and uh, some Holland Files that came out recently. Not only Phil, Science Steve, Shay Fontana, Tony Fleece. Uh, Travis and I, Midwest All Pro, doing a show the 28th. They'll be doing a show that night. That's the main attraction that night. Jill Thompson, Ryan Cody, John Allen, and more. Tom Wynn, uh, going to be at Supercon.com. Make sure there's a lot going on that weekend. I would say, if I am going to tell you any kind of advice, by that weekend pass, you won't regret it. You got MAP concert that night also. You got Wednesday Comics After Dark. And then you got a whole weekend of uh, stuff to do, people to see. Supercon.com for more information. Today, the day this is coming out, is the Super Bowl. That is uh, New England Patriots versus uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, congratulations to New England Patriots. Um, we're going to play a game. What about the Eagles? I'm saying they're going to win because they cheat. Don't get my joke. <laughs> Up top. Uh, so, uh, we're going to play a game. Last year on this time, we played a game. Uh, Gary made a game called Image Bowl. Image Comics okay. Super Bowl. And Gary, round two? It is finally year two of the Image Comics Super Bowl. And I was going to make an ad, but it's hard as fuck on Google Docs. So you didn't get one. Sorry. Um, so here's how it's going to go. It's a little bit different than last year's game. Good, because I don't know how that went. I was just supposed to say no. Good. Th- okay. So I'm going to kind of kitty corner so you can't see my paper. Sorry. I'm going to do a little readjusting here. <laughs> so here's all the rules. I wrote them up top. So that way I can, I'll make sure I tell them. So there's four quarters. You with me so far? I got it. There's six questions a quarter. The person who gets... So we're going to do a coin toss at the beginning. Whoever gets it gets to go first. You have 20 seconds to answer the question. When that time goes from 10 seconds or lower, the other person can also answer it for an interception. Then they will get the point. Okay? And then they will get to... At, they will be asked the next question, the okay. next preceding question. Um, cause you, as long as you get answers right, you keep getting the questions asked oh, first. See. You keep getting the first downs. Okay. Yep. Um, now there is extra point questions like so, but you can only activate them after you get six points. Okay. So you have to get six points to be able to do an extra point to get like a seven point. Okay. And, um, there's for each of the six questions, there's two easy questions, two medium and two hard that are all at random. I used randomizers to mix up the order after I made the questions. And it's whoever says the answer out loud gets the point. So it's not saying final answer or anything. You literally say what I have here as an answer. Otherwise, you don't get the point. Make sense? Yes. We'll just go ahead. Yeah. What I the hell? I, I was just reading all the rules. I need my phone out for the timer. I don't so know if I got that. But uh, I did hear you're going to do a coin toss, so... Uh, we're going to do a coin toss, but 20-second timers, basically, and in the last 10 seconds, the other person come in and intercept the question if you don't get it in time. And you don't... I don't go, Alex, it's already asked to me. If he, if it's Marvin's question... If I hear if Marvin it, say, like, what's my favorite color, and it's blue, and he said, you say green, pink, and then he goes blue, then he gets it. Okay. Whoever says it. So, I mean, it I, you don't chime in. It's just, I say, you know what our voices sound like. Right. You can keep saying as many times as you want until you get the answer right. Holy shit. But you have 10 seconds for the other person. I can, can spam jump. it all I want. That's right. So, I'll do the coin toss first. I have a flip a coin app. Is that what you have for moves the coin? I did, but I guess he has one. Oh, sorry. I didn't see that. All right. So, who wants to flip the coin? That doesn't matter to me. Why don't you just flip it and one of us will call it? You're the rest. Okay. Sure. <laughs> well, who's going to call it? I'll call it. Okay. Fine. Ready? Alex, call it. Tails. It is still, still flipping, still flipping. It's heads. heads. So, Marvin, do you want to get the first question, or you want to defer so you get the first question, second half? Second half. Okay. So Alex gets the first question. Okay. I'm going to go to my timer. So the first quarter, mostly because I don't know how this game works, so you show me. I explain the rules at the beginning. <laughs> it's of twenty the game. seconds to answer. You get to intercept it. Ten, ten to seconds. Ten to one. Ten to zero. So I can just right away start saying stuff? No. No. So I, I ask him the question. First. He gets the first 10 seconds all to himself. He's being a dumb shit. The last 10 seconds. Alex, why was tonight in. the night you decided to bring beer for us to drink? <laughs> I got a new... <laughs> well, I wonder how that worked. <laughs> and I have water to drink. Now, another thing that I thought was cool about this year is I themed each quarter. Ooh. So quarter one is Killer Be Killed and Deadly Class. All right, so there's three questions from Killer Be Killed, three questions from Deadly Class. Okay. There's one easy, one medium, one, of those, one hard One of those question. I haven't read in a long time. Uh, also, uh, this is not going to be my strong suit. I don't know. I know these questions are going to be about people, and I don't know. I don't know any of their names. So it's right. going to be like writers. Um, Maybe. Also, do know. you have a pen and sticky note over there? No, nope. for keeping track of score. Can you bring up notes on your phone or something? Take score. Take score. 
I didn't plan that hey, far look ahead. It. We could have had a coin test here. Ah, oh, fuck. You had a coin the whole time. Whoa. Correct there. All right. So, is we got a notepad up? Uh, oh, is he keeping tabs or am I keeping tabs? I got it. He's got okay. a book. All right. So, you can start answering after I ask the question. I'm going to ask it one time. All right. So, the first question is a hard question. Okay. Who is the detective investigating the vigilante murders in Kill or Be Killed? Oh, fuck. I don't know this fucking name. Uh, it's a girl. Susan. Susan Bellucci. <laughs> uh, is her name Alex? Is it we need detective in last name? I don't know. I don't, there's no clue. That There's no way I'm going to know. Alex name. Sedgwick. <laughs> See the one. All right. Timer off. So it was Detective Lily Sharp. That was close. So no Surely anyway. you've overestimated our intelligence on these books. To be fair, she I hasn't, said the hard, she she hasn't the hard been in very many of them. Yeah. So, I mean... I, hard I, is like, you're probably not going to get it. Medium is you have a chance, and easy is you'll definitely get it. How do you pick them again? What do you mean? I randomized them. Oh, okay. So there's an order, but you get the next question since he didn't get it. So, Marvin, this is an easy question. Who is the headmaster at the academy in Deadly Class? See, you say easy like I would know that. And once again, I don't know anybody's name. Who is the headmaster at the academy in Deadly Class? So I think Lynn, but I, that's all I know. Lynn Yu. What kind of Lynn? <laughs> hey, Master Lynn. Technically, I'll give it to Marvin, but it's Master Lynn. So you got a point, Marvin. Hey, I said Headmaster Lynn. I know. And he shit. didn't. He I'm just like said the Lynn. Patriots. It's rigged. <laughs> yeah, I know shit. Agreed. He's, Why didn't you? Right. What, did you draw stick figures? Yeah, I was using that for something else. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. It goes back to Marvin because he got it right. So it's Boom. a medium question. Um, what governmental faction is trying to hunt down Dylan, otherwise known as the vigilante and killer be killed? What governmental faction is trying to hunt down Dylan, otherwise known as the vigilante? Government organization? Yep. FBI? Yeah, NYPD. It is the NYPD. Oh. <laughs> so Marvin gets I was like, FBI is not a federal crime. He's saying that he wouldn't get these and he's getting more. NYPD. Right. Why? I knew Lynn just. Some of these ones, like the 10 seconds, almost too long for him to have time to waste. Yeah. But, but. think about a possession. Hey, don't be crying about the rules now. You heard him up first. Hey, listen here, you big <laughs> cheater. <laughs> All right, Marvin, another medium question. What year does Deadly Class start in? 1983, 1985, 1984, 1986, 1987. 1987. See how this game works? Yeah, you spam the shit. All right. Question five also goes to Marvin. It's a hard question. Why do you, I got a question. Uh, I'm not not making fun because it's your game. I'm not, but I'm really confused why it keeps coming to me. Because you keep getting them right. But if I get a point, the other team gets the ball. Not this game. <laughs> no, in this because game you keep getting the ball back. <laughs> you keep getting it back. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So well, no, no. If I intercept it here, then and you get it. it I, well, yeah. But I if he that. gets it wrong or doesn't get it at all, then it goes to you. But if I intercept it. And then it's your question. I, I, shut up. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> but so he would never get like the seventh point, though. I mean, you get the after you accumulate six points, then you Throughout get the kick. entire game. OK, so and then th- there's th- another. It's bracket. not the first period. No, it's, you can okay. get it the whole game. OK. And every time you get six, you can do an extra point. Okay. But if you miss the extra point, you can't do it again until you get another six. questions. OK. All right. So hard question. Helmut and Marcus share an appreciation for which band in Deadly Class? Helmut, by the way. Helmut, whatever. Black matter. Sabbath. Uh, Iron Maiden. It was Iron Maiden. I like this game because I never know the answer straight or whatever, but if I keep if I can keep going. Yeah, if you can keep spamming the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be one of them. Alright. Easy question. Uh, <laughs> whose cock does Garrett if, if suck? I had, if I had hard ones so far? Yeah, you've had one. Yeah, the Which helmet one, one was the last hard. one was hard. It wasn't hard. Well, not for smart people. <laughs> Alright, easy question. Who is Dylan's love interest in Killer Be Killed? Maria. You're stupid. <laughs> oh, Dylan. Oh, sheesh. I'm on Dilly Class, though. Kira. What is her name? Kira. <laughs> you forgot the answer before to the question. That's fine. He's going to get it anyway. Um, I actually forgot until you said it. I can't right. her name. So that's so, end of quarter one. Yep. It's Marvin, quarter two. That's what we call you jump the line. Five that's to zero. The points. That's five encroachment. Zero. All right. We're going to change possession on quarters, though. Just oh, that's good. Give you a handicap. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. All right. Alex, we're starting out. Oh, sorry. Quarter two is Southern Bastards and East of West. Ooh. And I East hope to West shit. We're both going to suck. <laughs> I hope to shit that I did these questions justice because I have no freaking clue if these are easy or hard for you okay. guys. So, it, I mean, <laughs> we'll I did my out. best. But East of West and what? East of West and Southern Bastards. Oh. Both books we haven't read in a long I time. Do, these took me like 
like an hour to figure out questions. Oh, for I'm sure it was so hard to find. Not stuff. for I mean, so the ambassadors. Now that we haven't read in a long time because of us because they just haven't came out. Yeah, so the ambassadors came out last week. I have a feeling. Yeah, but one issue every five years. I have a feeling that Jonathan Hickman is just like at some summer house, like living off of that Avengers money that he made. Yeah, uh, that dude's not doing anything <laughs> right now. No. All right, so medium question now. What is the full first and last name of the sheriff who otherwise goes by Big Bert and Southern Bastards? Earl Tubbs. Earl Tubbs Jr. Earl Tubbs Sr. Now you're thinking of the main character. He's not a sheriff. The sheriff is the other guy. His dad get killed. Oh, the black guy. Yeah. I don't know what his name is, though. Yeah. I'm trying to give you the point. name like Marcus, but I, I thought he was the sheriff. He used oh. to be. It was Bertrand Tubb, or Bert, Bertrand oh. Tubb. So they call him Earl. He's the one that found the bat. Yeah. Well, you know, if, that, Earl's if, the that's, the answer, if that's the answer you got, that's that's him. No, that's but I want, he wants oh. the full name is Bertrand. Oh. Bertrand Tubb, who is his father, not Earl. Earl's the one. Bertrand gives the bat to Earl, who then gives it to his daughter. He doesn't give it to her. Or whatever, she finds it. No. Oh. No, it's whatever. I don't know the story. I know it's boss, <laughs> but he's not the sheriff. Boss the head. sheriff is somebody else. Bertrand dies in the first issue. This question was rigged. It was <laughs> that, not. It's Earl, but he must go by Bertrand. Then. But Earl's not the sheriff when the story in the story at all. He used to be. That's all I'm saying. Who goes by Big Bert though? His dad, uh, the sheriff's dad, was part of. Uh... Go on. Hmm. All right. Anyway, Nobody. We neither of us got it. So. <laughs> Easy question um, for Marvin. In East of West universe. What famous war never happened? Civil War. Correct. That I knew. That is easy. That's correct. Because that's the whole catalyst. Well, the fucking it's correct. Now watch this run all the way through. All right. I don't know. All right. So medium question to Marvin. What is the name, first and last, of the first keeper of the message who, event- who eventually gets eaten by wolf? <laughs> now, that's not a medium question. That's a hard <laughs> fucking question. You know how many people are in East or West? That first guy is that Blame Wikipedia. is that uh, evangelist kind of guy, right? Yeah, but I don't remember what his name is. The no. one that they keep ripping his eye out? Yeah. I can't remember what his name is. Eyeball Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. It is Ezra Orion. If you had an extreme level, that's extreme. <laughs> <laughs> that's we never know his name. <laughs> that's All like, right. I don't, that's like, I know you said you looked that for Wikipedia, but like, there's so many people in that book. I don't even know. Well, and it's been so long since we've read it that I don't remember. If the remember main character wasn't things. named Death, I wouldn't know his name. Yeah. All right. Goes to Alex next. It's an easy question. Let's see. So you can't answer, Marvin, until the 10 seconds <laughs> comes fine. around. Where does Southern Bastards take place? Alabama. Do you want the fucking city yes. too? Yes. Southern Bastards, <laughs> Alabama. Oh, shit, 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 shit. I know shit, the shit. answer, but I'm going to let you. I'll go to one second. You got nine seconds. Yeah, I know, but I know it's. Oh, shit. Do you want the county? Essex County. Croc County. Croc oh, County. Yeah. Buddy, come on. Intercepted, Marvin's point. This is your strong suit. What, knowing geography? <laughs> no, remembering shit. Yeah, geography is <laughs> not my thing. I literally read the first issue, and Croc County was all over that book. How long did you read it today? Yeah. Oh, well, no wonder you remember it. <laughs> well, yeah, I had, to, I had to do research. No fucking shit, you remember that. I know, but the whole story takes place in that town. But Carr County would be a county, isn't it? Not just... That's what they call it, though. I don't think there's ever a name for the city. Oh, there is. What's the city's name? I don't know. What is it? Do you remember? I think it's just Craw. No. I think it's Craw County. Craw County. Yeah, it's Craw County. So it probably just is Craw County. All right. Hard question for Marvin. How many times have the Rebels won the state for a football championship in Southern Bastards? Ooh, how many times? It's 14. No. 12. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 17, 22, 30, 28, 40, 32, 497, <laughs> 17. It was five. Wow, we were it close. It says it on the, it's <laughs> on the same sign that says Croc County. It says home of the five times. Also, state we should have wrote issue one. That's all this question is coming from. <laughs> Like I said, I wanted to have these books included. So you By guys the way, enjoy if this it. was the actual Super Bowl, it's going to be fucking boring as fuck. Uh, seven to zero. Well, this, <laughs> We're almost to halftime. This is this is the Eagles and the Vikings game. <laughs> but it goes to Alex for the next question. It's a hard question, of course. Of course. <laughs> in the East of West timeline, what year was the message finally complete and interpreted at the end of ti- as the end of times? Holy shit! <laughs> in the East of West timeline, what year was the message finally complete and interpreted as the end of times? Um. 
Oh, shit. I think I know this. Zero BC. No. 2023. No. 2012. No. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2026. 1958. I don't remember that at all. All right. That's the thing with... He's going to sing. Here's the halftime show. Don't break the mics. <laughs> Marvin's <laughs> death. <laughs> uh, no, I was going to start a song. I forgot what the words were. I, got, I got drew a blank. <laughs> uh, that's the thing about East to West, though, is that there's so much to that book that when I, like I said, I always forget stuff. And then you go back and read it, and you're like, wow, I didn't even realize that was Shh, part of the The coach story. is still yelling at me. <laughs> 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 All right. We're on a quarter three. Oh, good. Lazarus and Black Magic. It should be better. No, maybe we'll Lazarus. see. Lazarus. Or no. Oh, you didn't read the source book. Maybe I got some memories. <laughs> you didn't read it either. I you read maybe read it from Wiki, but uh, did you? I read, read the first one. Oh, you did read yeah. Carlisle. All right. Easy question. For who? For Marvin. Marvin. Okay. Me. Mary, you won that coin flip. I, 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 I just asking, making sure. Who knew? You can't even remember the beginning of this game. I can remember these facts. Mm. All right. Easy question. People who are not classified in the population of the world of Lazarus are referred to as waste. Correct. Eight zero, baby. <laughs> you can do a special this point me, anytime you this want. This is me to drinking Marvin. too, by the way. Marvin, you can do a special point anytime you want. Oh, why? You want to <laughs> throw a knife in his back while <laughs> I'm kicking him in his face? <laughs> well, you're only going to get one point from it. I thought the steel trap over here would be getting some questions. That's what I'm right? saying. I don't get a chance game. to do it. Spammy right. Magoo over here keeps spamming shit, even though that one I know you knew. All right, hard question for Marvin. Mm. What is the na- the last name of Laurent, who is part of the Era organization in Black Magic? What is the last name of Laurent, who is part of the Era organization? Now, this was a story day. told in the backups and those diaries. I literally said it last show. I know you did, and I listened to it because oh, yeah. I did the show. Laurent. Laurabia. It's a French name, right? Yep. La Rue. Yeah. Levent. La Croix. La Douche. That was close, though. The La Douche. Levent. It was Leve- <laughs> it's Levesque. Levesque. Get this fucker the point. That was want, hard. No. No, I want the point for the dude. You get the next question. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's a hard one. Oh, how many questions are left? <laughs> this is the third quarter. I don't know, Half but how many are left? Halfway Four. Through. Four of this quarter and then six next one? Yeah. Okay, you still got a chance then. Yeah. If you get I'm up eight to zero. <laughs> but you can do extra points. You can't falter. You got to get Otherwise, we're playing thing. just funsies. And you lost the fucking English cocks. You know, you know Alex doesn't play for funsies. This guy's <laughs> out for competition. All right. Medium. Oh, he's going to be pissed at this question. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> you know myself. You know the main joy from the video was seeing Alex get really mad. And This is one of those ones I'm surprised <laughs> you're this not is taping. One. Should I take a picture for the social media feed? <laughs> All right. Ready? Yeah. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to read this. What is the name of the letters column in Lazarus? <laughs> <laughs> Forever yours. It is correct. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, when I did that one, I was like, oh, fuck. It's me bad. Nice job. First question. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually had the uh, oh. what, 12th, but. Followed by an easy question. So oh, good. You better. <laughs> That'd be sad. I can get the hard one or medium. <laughs> All right. What is the name, first and last, of Rowan's partner in Black Magic? Oh, fuck. He's been in every single issue. I know. It's oh, like it s- something Morgan. Adam. Stephen Morgan. John Morgan. Adam Morgan. McDuffie Morgan. I thought he was Irish. Ladushi Morgan. Andy. <laughs> Andy Andrew, Dufresne. Andrew Morgan. Morgan Chaffee. Well, I got the first yeah. name that, that was last. There's eight so. questions left, right? Yep. Alex, better answer all these correctly. <clears throat> so it's up to you first. <sighs> all right. Do it now while he's reading. <laughs> Hard question. The family crest for Carlisle has a sword. Oh, Jesus. The family crest for sword. Carlisle has a sword going through what? I like how you a said it twice. Did you read? <laughs> a sword. Oh, it does have a sword. Is it going through a shield? Nope. Through a heart. Nope. Through no um, cheating. Through Marvin's face. <laughs> what? I'm looking at the time. Um, sword through a dragon. Sword through snake. A person. Sword through you. Through a DNA, DNA helix. It's a sword. That doesn't sound right. Helix. Yeah, it does. It is. I can see it. That's right. a snake. <laughs> <laughs> so snake-like. That's two snakes. You got it wrong. Snake-like. It goes to Alex. Medium question. <clears throat> what town does the comic book Black Magic take place in? Salem. I know this. Portland. 
<laughs> More dumb shit things I can say. Says it right on her back. This is for the fucking win. Portsmouth. Correct. Bring it, bitch. <laughs> Right on her badge, it says poor Smith. I only know, I only know, and this is going to piss you off. I only know because that's where Greg Rucka lives. <laughs> that doesn't bother me if you know stuff. Uh, no, I'm saying I don't remember from the comic. I only know because Greg, Greg Rucka oh. lives there. I think he lives there. I'm pretty sure he lives there. All right. We're on to quarter four, Saga and Royal City. Now you're correct. This is Eagles versus Vikings. Now you can, there's no point. <laughs> but keep coming like you're, like you're going to keep that town alive, their hope. Now we're just at party play. To be fair, if I... Could get all six of these. It'd be seven to eight. I would have to do. do I could point. do an extra point, and at least make it close. Oh, you can do extra point anytime. Yeah, yeah. you've been That's you've been passing extra points. Remember when you weren't listening to the rules at the beginning of this? No, he's too he busy too joking. Con- it. it got too confusing, so I <laughs> zoned out. I literally read every line. That's how my point. life is. When stuff gets confusing, I'm out <laughs> mentally. So, <laughs> Marvin. I mean, Alex got that question wrong, so it goes to Marvin. It's a medium question. Um, and I want you to count out on your fingers for this one, so I'm going to give you a little hint. What are the first names of every member of the Pike family in Royal City? Do you dickweed? No clue. I didn't even remember the main character's name. You couldn't pay me five bucks. Me? Uh, five bucks. Fifty bucks for that. Tommy. Patrick. Patrick Tara, Tara. Richie. Richie. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Is that everybody? No, you got to do all five. Patrick. Tommy. Richie. Tara. Peter. Patty, you're close, but time right now. So it was. Tom- well, I had Dick leaked over here <laughs> trying to do what I'm saying. And there was six. My bad. No, wait. One, two, yeah, three. Yeah, there's six. There's two parents. Give him the kids. fucking point. He got it. Fine. He got the point. He got Tommy, it. Patrick, Reggie, Pete, Patty, and Tara. Who's Reggie? Dad? Reggie's not Richie. It's Reggie. It's Richie. Oh, it is Richie. You're right. Whatever. Fuck. Look I want this. two points for that fucking shit. Fucking <laughs> Well, hey. Was Reggie? Rough. Worked on this like all the time. Okay. Doesn't even all know right. his rules or doesn't even know the answers. I know. Whatever. So I'm, all right, I, let's go. Let's go. Let's my go. My turn. So it goes to Alex. Easy question. Okay. The War of Fang takes place where in Saga? War of Fang? P H A N G. The War of Fang in Saga takes place where? On the Comet of Fang. Correct. Yeah. Were you trying to help me with that? Yeah. Oh, I just thought you were waving at me. Comet. Yeah. Was it Comet? What did I say? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no. okay. that's, what, that's what that movement Okay, meant. This question is going to be hard as balls. Goes to Alex. I'm ready. About Saga? Nope. What book did Pat write after Royal City in Royal City? So what book did he write after Royal City, but before this one he's working on now? It's on the first The Life page. of a Texter. Nope. Oh, no, that was me faking looking it up. Because <laughs> I don't know what it is. I do know it's... Uh, Life of Tommy. No, Life of Pi. It's some fucking. So he's working on it now. Canoe heads. Yeah, some dumb. There's like two pages of him arguing o- with his editor over it. Oh, it was on the first issue. Yes, it was. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I know. I just talked about the whole book. I'm bashing you for the Southern Bastard shit. That's a good question. See that? What was a medium or hard? That was hard. a hard. That's hard. Yeah. That was hard. Like that, we should. That was know. like a small thing where you have to pay attention. All right, medium question for Marvin. What is the name of the author of Elena's favorite novel in Saga? Hmm, the gal guy who she meets on that planet. Uh, the Cyclops? Robert Smith. No, that's the guy from The Cure. <laughs> um, Bobby De Niro. Nope, that's the guy from Goodfellas. <laughs> Oswald. Copperpot. <laughs> <laughs> Cabarina. I know it's Oswald. Oswalda. D. Oswald Heist. The household heist. All right. Two questions left. D O H. I mean, definitively, I've already lost. Three yeah, to nine. But. All right. Hard question. Like, fucking hard. Oh, okay. Bang, delicious. Four. It goes to Alex. Okay. Hey, can I do something? What? If he gets this, can I give him two points? Sure. I don't care. Watch me not get If I don't get it, I lose two points. <laughs> Upshur and Doff get killed in what issue of Saga? Upshur and Doff get killed in what issue of Saga? Did they die? No. Yes, they did. Mm mm. <laughs> I don't think so. 43. Nope. 42. Nope. Oh, it's 44. Nope. 45. Nope. Uh, 38. Nope. 37. Nope. 27. 16. Nope. 19. 17. Did they die? They didn't die. They haven't died. Yes, it does. That's no, what it says. No, they're still You just around. saw them recently in yeah, one of the issues. Yeah, they were in the last issue. issue. And they're back alive. <laughs> one of them gets they shot. I said the, one they don't the, die. The fishy looking dude gets shot in the arm. Shot in the shoulder. Hmm. Once again. 
Whatever. This fucking Trebek. So hey, I want me t- doing <laughs> questions about things that I don't know. Who's, I was doing it I want two you. points for guessing on something I shouldn't have had to guess. I Who's vetting these questions? For you. Because 16 is one of the first times you should be having your license there. taken away, and you should be, <clears throat> be uh, right. shamed from being a host. Go ahead. Marvin. Yeah. Easy question. Who is the first person to interact with the ghost of Tommy in Royal City Number 1? You know, for any uh, normal human being, that would be easy, but... Let's do it. I don't remember. I'm thinking it's... Uh, Richie. Patrick. Patrick. Tara. It's Patrick. Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Take the points away, you said my mom. <laughs> All right. For funsies, obviously Marvin won. He kicked out his ass. <laughs> didn't, didn't take away his point. He said my mom. Yeah. And do an extra point. Yeah, we're doing... Well, I'm going to do all three, but just for fun. And you can add them to your score. I don't care anymore. It was just I'd fun still lose by two. Is this the actual last, last question of the quarter? No, those are... The game's over. Boom. Four to nine. It's not bad. But now we're going to do plus three. Extra point just for funsies. Three times those by seven. I defeated you. So extra Greatly. point is... Shut up. I'm 64... <laughs> Extra point is Image Comics history. So hopefully you brushed up on last year's Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, Alex. Yeah, this is Marvin. Did you watch? You watch? I know you you love your comic book history. So you read? I really you watched, do. You watch Super uh, Secret History of Comic Books? I've, I've read Super Gods twice now. <laughs> um, I listened Marvel, to the, the Untold Story. Uh, you wrote a report on that book. Yep, I listened to it at night even. Grant, whilst I'm sleeping, you interview Grant Morrison in uh, in Ireland. Grant and I oh, are buddy, our buddies. We're both doing some shrooms like uh, Klaus. I believe in his Klaus. last interview for Happy, he said, "Thank you to Alex Pastrelli. He's really taught me about comics, and uh, I now understand Batman on a different level." So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> By the way, if I could ever get Grant Morrison to say that, even fakingly, uh, mine would be blown. <laughs> so would Marvin's and Garrett's. <laughs> so first question is going to Alex since he had the last one right. Um, what year was Image founded? Nineteen eighty. This, is, this was on the last one. Uh, 1993. 2003. 1997. 92. 25-year anniversary, buddy. Whatever. I remember because last time you told me that. Woo! All right. Goes to Marvin. Here, you, who, you guys both just shout out the answer. Whoever gets it first. Well, we're not even keeping tabs anymore. It's no. over there. Who is the current <laughs> president not, of Image Comics? We're not keeping tabs. Marvin, who is it? You know that. Todd McFarlane. It is Todd McFarlane. Damn, I got it. We're not keeping tabs. You know it's uh, futile. Last question. Todd McFarlane. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Where is Image Comics headquarters located? Marvin, yeah, I don't know. Where is it located? We talked about it earlier, I think. San your Francisco. House. No, your it's house. in. Is it in the, is it in the uh, Northwest? Still in your house. Maine. Mm. Seattle. Michigan. New York Montana. City. That's a character, not a place. Where, fuck? Where is it? That was San Francisco. Oregon, uh, Portland. Portland, 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 Oregon. Boom! See, that's why you're confused. That's why I thought the Black Magic took place there. See, I said San Francisco and Seattle, so it was in between. I'm right. Give me the point. So this <laughs> has been the Image Comics Super Bowl number two. We'll see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the Super Bowl. Uh, that's exciting. The Super Bowl is going to be tomorrow when the New England Patriots defeat the uh, Philadelphia Eagles uh, seven to uh, thirty-two. That's my score. I'm gonna seven guess. to hundred. No, no, no. Here's the, hey, you know what? This is a, this we can do this because we, obviously the game. It's tomorrow, so we don't know. We're recording this on Saturday. Today, you mean? Uh, today, I know, but I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to guess 7 to 28, final score. What do you guess, Garrett? Um, hold on. Let me pull up my squares that I'm betting on, and I'll let you know <laughs> here in a second. <clears throat> Alex, what do you think? Who you th- so you're saying Patriots win? Patriots win. I would say Patriots 35 to 18. By the way, it's not because I want them to win. I just know it's going to happen. Oh, you know what the weird thing is that Philly could be 30 points ahead, much like last year where the Falcons were ahead 28 to 3. Yeah. And somehow Brady chucked that laser beam ball at someone and they caught it. So I it doesn't it doesn't matter who. You have it. to fear fourth quarter Tom Brady. That man's a beast. I feel like it's going to be Patriots 38, Eagles 19. Is it possible to get 19 points? Yeah, yeah. it is. You could do Some three sixes scenario. and if you miss get two sixes and one seven. So they have to miss two extra points? Yep. Or they have to get uh, two touchdowns and then I guess they could, do, I guess they could do four field, and field goals field and a touchdown. Yeah. If they're really filling up to it. Uh, so that's been uh, Wednesday Comics for this week. We had some comic reviews. Talked about my Brian Michael Bennis. We also talked about uh, or we played Image Comics uh, Super Bowl uh, Mac- Mach 2. Is that what you call it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Image Comics Super Bowl 2. Mach 2. Uh, by the way, just to clarify more that I'm not a Patriots fan, I'm a Jacksonville Jaguars fan. 
Uh, and, um, so, you know, I don't, there's no way in my heart of hearts I want them to win. I just know what's going to happen. So, uh, go to WednesdayComics.com. Malta Rocky Balboa, the underdog. Yes. WednesdayComics605 at gmail.com. Email us who you think. No, nope, too late. Never mind. I can't do that. Email us. Uh, what do you think about Brian Michael Bennis? Let us know what you think about him. Or leave us a voicemail, 605-215-1849. That's the voicemail. Leave us your uh, your tones on there, and we can uh, hear about Brian Michael Bennis. What do you think about this man of steel run? What do you think about um, him taking over these two books? What do you think about him taking over DC Comics? He sounds like Stewie from Family Guy. What are you, uh, what are you doing? That's <laughs> not uh, what Stewie sounds like. I, I can't do a Stewie voice. That's what he's doing right now. <laughs> like mum, mummy, mum. Lewis. What? Lewis. Do you know sometimes this guy makes me laugh internally, but I don't externally laugh because I want him, to, want him to say something in silence because it makes me laugh more. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? I don't support you on the show <laughs> when you say something funny because it makes me laugh internally, I said. It's an added joke. Come to it's, mm. it's kind of like when your dick shrivels <laughs> up in there, huh? 215-1849. Let us know what you think about Brian Michael Bendis. Let us know what you think about this Black Panther movie coming out pretty soon. You excited? I'm excited. I'm getting married like a couple weeks ago. I wasn't excited. I'm pumped now. Dude, uh, nope. I'm still holding it down at the meh. You know why? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm 100% serious about this. It's going to sound like I'm joking, but believe me. I'm serious about this. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> I am. Uh, the, sound, the soundtrack came out. It's pretty cool. I like it. Are and those reviews came out. Yeah, it's Spoilers. on Spoilers. And the review came No, it's, it's, it came out and spoiled it's it. Not, not the score. Like, there's a soundtrack that came out. With oh, some so, okay. Gotcha. Um, and they released. Some people saw it already on Twitter. They were saying about it, and they all say it's great. So. Yeah. I thought I'd seen somewhere that's one of the better, best Marvel movies. Somebody it's already said, one of the best selling. Somebody said, definitely, this is definitely a Ryan Coogler movie. Uh, Marvel didn't didn't do anything just like how with that, uh, Ragnarok they let him do whatever they want he, they let him do whatever they want with this movie so Bumped. makes me more excited because that Creed it's Creed one of my favorite so movies good. not one of my favorite movies but of that it. year and uh, Fruitvale Station is really great too so looking forward to it and, Mike, and Michael B. Jordan's great so uh, at Wednesday Comics on Twitter at Alex Mastrello at Karat2188 at Marvin Norris Corso Aguero uh, let us know what you're picking up uh, during the week we all like to hear, uh, hear you on Twitter Alex was saying hey we need to get some more action on Twitter before the show started. He's, so tweet at him. Let her know what your favorite book is, and he'll respond to you. At Pastrami underscore news. Also, Pastrami's uh, floating in the in the wind out there. He has no news to report. Do you think he's in hiding? So that way, when he comes back, all his news floods in. And you, you know, you saw up. last time he had gotten kidnapped. <laughs> Luckily, he had some friends, a uh, candlestick maker and a baker. So, you know, he's just probably laying low. And is there, was hungry. Is there any rumor that he's getting married to Mrs. Munster? You know, we weren't supposed to talk about it. It's a good possibility. Pastrami mustard. Put that together and you put a little mustard on there. Pretty good. It's got a kick. It's got a kick. Um, <laughs> Facebook.com slash Wednesday Comics Podcast. Like us on Facebook and leave us a message there if you want to. Uh, remember, we have a book club coming up, right, Alex? We should sure do. We are reading Day Tripper. Wednesday Comics, Leave Extraordinary <laughs> Gentle People proudly presents Day Tripper by Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba. Holy shit, you should tell... Wait, when we were doing commercials earlier, by the way... This hey, everybody, baseball, listen to this voice. You should have done that voice. That's it's a good fake voice. and amazing, and you love it. I didn't know we could tap into this voice. Nope, but now we're... Go back. ahead. Nice, Alex. Hey, guys, how you doing? <laughs> what day are we going to read this? Um, what, they get, uh, get their voice I don't know. Else? You guys threw me off last time when I told you it was going to be April 5th, and you're like, fuck that. It's that, April 4th, right. I believe. That first Wednesday of April, make sure you get us your voicemails, your tweets, your Facebook messages, your emails about Day Tripper. And let us know what you think about it. It's We're 10 gonna, issues long. I tell you what, uh, worth your time reading. Very worth your time. Very Make sure to bring the tissues. Tears are going to be rolling down. Don't read. Here's a little wor- warning, though. Don't read this. We three and Pride of Baghdad back to back. Uh, Most likely be bad you'll kill for you. It'll be bad for you. <laughs> you'll definitely have a bad week if you do that. Uh, Supercon 2018, Return of the Con. Only that's a moron September would do that. No. 28th, 29th, and 30th. I've done two thirds of that. <laughs> uh, we'll be there the 28th. We'll do a little show Wednesday Comics Live. We're already talking ideas. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I might come out and live do a little, from the convention center. <laughs> do a little Wednesday dance. Comics. That's Supercon live 2018. At night. Brought to you by Black Hills Federal Credit Union. Uh, Roots of the Swamp Thing.com. John Boyling going to be on the show next week. Oh, it's a little spoiler, but he's going to be here. We're going to talk about some comic books, Roots, uh, the Swamp Thing we're going to talk about, obviously, and the Avatar of the Green has a little special out next week. We'll talk about that. If it comes out, I think we'll delay this week. It better not be. It better come out. Uh, that's from Tom King and Jason Fabak. Speaking of Fabak earlier, right? It's Fabak? Yeah, from Man of Steel. So uh, we'll take check that out, but I'll go to RootsToTheSwampThing.com right now. 
go there to learn some more about the Avatar of the Green before that issue comes out. If you want to make sure you're not confused, like Alex was in Milk Wars number one. So another week, uh, like I said, a little of a week or week comic wise, I believe. I'm with you guys there. It was very. Uh, there was nothing this week that was like, boom. That's obviously my favorite. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I forgot to mention on Punisher the Platoon. Uh, Jordi Belair nailed it on colors. Oh yeah. He's the thing. That's the thing with Jordi is that. By the She's way, on so many books that I. I'm sorry. I missed. I mislooked it. She won an award recently. I think it might have been an Eisner or something. Uh, some, he, she won some award. Obviously, best colors of the year, or maybe just somebody's top ten list. Uh, which I was like, yeah, of course. Like, who else is going to be? Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's great. She made, she all did the colors for um, something else we read too. I think maybe not. We'll see. But she does a lot of stuff. So uh, Hawkeye, I think, right? Hawkeye, Batman, Batman. She does at least ten books. No, that's uh, I see on there. Man. Uh, hey, she does ten books. We didn't. I didn't even get ten books this week. That's how this light week. It's the fifth week. Obviously, you can't expect a lot when it's the fifth week. A lot of annuals came out. I didn't read any of those so far, but further good. Um, I'm rambling on because I'm sweating. So here, I'm your sweaty puddle, Marvin. <laughs> hey, do the voice. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I have been Alex. Simon I'm Garrett. You're so boring. You didn't do that voice that you did the first time. Yeah, well, you guys scared it. You were doing it like a show person, and then you were like, I am Alex. Hello, everyone. You ruined it. You're a fucker. <laughs> I'm Garrett. Peace out. You already said that. Hey, everyone, keep turning those pages. <laughs>